What's up, everyone? Welcome to XP Overdrive. I'm here with my two friends. I'm I'm Rain, and I'm here with Waka and Gray. Hi. And what's up? How you know, everyone? I've had a great time this week. Um, what you're gonna hear about in this episode because of Nintendo Direct. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the is that the basis on my week being good? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah, that was that was pretty cool Nintendo Direct. I'm yes. kind of disappointed. <laughs> kind of disappointed in Sony's though, but you know, hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it because like I heard that it wasn't great, so I was like, well, okay. I'll so save we were just like, you know, it was like out of the blue. They were like, you know, there's a surprise. Like everybody's like, this is a surprise. It was uh, the same day Direct. as the Nintendo Direct, wasn't it? Yeah, they were like, there's a surprise. Yeah. Nobody knew about it. And they're just like, oh, hey, tomorrow we're doing this thing. And it was like, I think, 20 minutes long. And it was only like, I swear, like seven games. And none of them that I, well, not that I say I'm not interested in them, but none that I'm super excited about, right? Like, I mean, I'm a fan of God of War, but I'm not like that really excited of it. Mm -hmm. like, like, they showed them God of War and a few other things. But... I'm excited about God of War. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, li I like the games, but like, it's not my favorite, like, it's mm -hmm. like God of War is not something that I'm like, oh my god, like uh, you know, yeah, I, I don't get. I'm, like I'm that excited. Those. Um, I do like the God of War series. Yeah, they are uh, good though. The newest yeah. one was great. It was definitely yeah. probably one of the better games that came out that year. Yeah, it was. It, it was good. I haven't finished that God of War either. Funny enough, I haven't been on my PlayStation like in a while since I've been on PC. <laughs> but, I feel fair. that yeah that's been on my backlog yeah. for a while because I'm always yeah playing PC and that's for my console. Yep, mm -hmm. that's me. And I need to, though. I, I got so many I haven't finished. But yeah, like I said, yeah, I've got a war was the only one on there and it looked cool. Uh, other than that, yeah, PlayStation, I don't know. PlayStation has been kind of like, I like, I don't get into the whole, like, the whole who's winning thing, but I just thought mm -hmm. it was disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be that person, but it, like, I've just, I haven't watched it, but just from like hearing you talk about it and some other folks, it did kind of feel like, a, oh, Nintendo's doing it, so we have to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, like, that was just uh, uh, so odd and like the timing. And I just, I feel like if you do want to have, if you do, if you are trying to like win the console war, um, uh, wait until you have more to present. Cause like, then like I, four I'm, games, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, like, yeah. I'm overall, I'm more a PlayStation person just because historically they've had more of the games that interest me. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, Nintendo did really freaking well. Like, there are a lot Hell of yeah. things that they show that I want. And then Sony, my boy, my, my <laughs> baby. What? Which, like, what was that? I believe yeah. you were saying, like, beforehand that, like, you kind of... I haven't really been as invested in Nintendo in a while, and it like yeah. it means it means a lot. It's like coming from you, that you're just like Nintendo did really well there. Like this is now appealing to me. Yeah, yeah I'm actually and, and that's a funny thing because buy a Switch. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, and, and, all these years yeah. later, and I'm finally I'm just like, oh, now I really do need to get one. I I've always been into like all of the systems in general, but Nintendo was always the last one I got, and not. And it's it just because it wasn't interesting to me. Like the only, you know, because like we talked about before, like they always did a lot of more family friendly games, or at least the games that didn't interest me. The only time I've ever gotten any Nintendo console when it would come out is because I knew there was going to be a new Zelda game and then like Metroid, right? Like, but they don't do much Metroid as much, but, but Zelda, I was just like, you know, I love Zelda. So I, I've got to get it or at least try to play a Zelda game. Like mm. that's was the main reason but yeah nintendo has been especially switch switch has been doing really awesome so like yeah i was pretty happy to watch that that was pretty cool especially a lot of the rp square enix man they smashed the hell out of that yeah, i was enjoying a lot, a lot of, of lot of titles coming out oh yeah yeah a lot of them like as we saw we we watched the direct again like well it's again for me i've watched it three times now <laughs> <laughs> but uh we watched it like just before the episode as a refresher um, a lot of the games seem to be coming out in like the first half of the year. Yeah, that's and, pretty like, cool. Gray was saying that it's probably because of like like CVD putting like everything on hold. That now that people aren't on hold, it's like okay, we're done. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. It's everything like just, all at once. I feel like timing wise, because it is it, it's not normal for so many big titles come out at the same time I, I, mm -hmm. I feel like it would make sense if that's why of just like things were disrupted for so long yeah. that now oh yeah 
everything's I'll kind be of honest. finishing at the, the same time. <laughs> Um, when it comes to, like, spoiler alert for anybody that hasn't watched the Nintendo Direct, when it comes to, um, Tears, Tears of the Kingdom, uh, the Breath of the Wild 2, I, A, like, wasn't expecting it, like, for a while, because, like, yeah, I'm assuming they're running it in the same engine as Breath of the Wild, um, but for me, I was like, it would be a smart thing if they're leaving this for their next console like because the switch has been out for a while now and like of course sony and um microsoft have released a console since so i was like ah maybe that's what nintendo have in mind but i was pleasantly surprised that we're getting it in may and even then i was like oh like because i know the, <laughs> the date on it was like of course like writing numbers as your date is a little bit like uh, confusing because I was just like, oh, this is coming out in December. And then people were just like, oh no, it's coming out in May. I was just like, oh, I actually thought it would be like, I, I guess, smarter for it to come out like near Christmas time. Um, which is like, we see that a lot. Some bigger titles will come out like near the end of the year. Um, so I was, I, I'm excited because that's like what, eight months away or something. Um, but I'm also, I guess a little bit surprised. Yeah. I, you know, I have to say though, I, I kind of feel like, I mean, don't I mean this, I mean, I could be wrong, but I kind of feel when it comes like the console war thing, I think Nintendo kind of just doesn't care about it. Like in the mm -hmm. way that everybody else does. Cause they, they don't necessarily seem to be in the rush to always release a new console when another company like Sony and Xbox yeah. releases one. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? That's and they, true. you know, yeah, they, it's like they, they still have to on switch. their own time. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. On their own time. And I think also that works just for them. Cause I mean, yeah, Nintendo's still doing their thing. It's not like they did a, they, you know, it's not like they sunk like Sega, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> you know, Sega. I think they're doing, I know. Oh, I, don't get me wrong, I love I Sega so. too. However, <laughs> I do. Switch the Switch did add the Sega Mega Drive channel for like oh, for man. their subscribers, and I was just like, amazing. Like I upgraded yeah. my subscription immediately. I was like, this is N64, Sega Mega Drive, you just did it. You you just transported me back. Like oh, I, I uh, fuck. I remember what it was <laughs> I was playing those. I was maybe like eleven or something when I was playing those. It was like there I'm still after the time because like of course, I was born in like 1997, and we just <laughs> we just watched a, a a video that Gray forced us to watch, where it was like <laughs> 1996 or something. The N64 came out. <laughs> yeah, and and that's Shout funny because you said Second Films. Channel. Your stuff is great, and if you guys don't know the N64 song that Five Second Films did, just go just go look it up. Yeah, go you, check it out. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, when you said Sega Channel, I remember when I was a kid, there was an actual Sega Channel on the Sega Genesis, and there was a cartridge that came, and you hooked it up through the like the little cable hookups, yeah. through the, and you could play like all the games from Sega on this server. Like you could play all these games. It was all day. It was subscription service, of course. And I, I remember having that. And that was probably the greatest thing in the world for a gamer like me as a kid. Like I'd come home, and I would always find a new game to play. Like every day. I, I, yeah. I mean, Mortal Kombat, like the new Mortal Kombat would come out and I'd be playing that. I didn't have to buy it. I was, you know, so yeah, I, I miss stuff like that, but that's cool that they put like Sega stuff on the, on the switch. Finally, that's pretty yeah. cool. I mean, it's and, good. They have like, do you remember Ristar? Yeah. That was my favorite, like Sega, Sega Mega Drive collection game that they had on there. And I was like, oh, do it. What did you wow. do? <laughs> you just took all of my time. Because it was like, at the same time, I think they added Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings on their um, NES and SNES channels. And I was like, ah, you just did it, Nintendo. You just took all of my time, actually. Because Earthbound is like, Earthbound's in my top 10 games. It's it's brilliant. It can be hard sometimes, can be quite punishing sometimes. But it's yeah. also an older title, and most of the older titles can be quite punishing. <laughs> as I have noticed by playing Fatal Frame 1. I, <laughs> right. I Which I'm glad you're playing. I consider that that old of a game, but well, I guess it's PS2. <laughs> it's, I wouldn't say it's, like, a difficult, but, like... I was like, E.T. E. old difficult. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, we're thinking, right, yeah. <laughs> um, the E.T. The e. game... 
when I think uh, of the ET game, my brain also goes to the um, Friday the Thirteenth game. Yeah, the, like, uh, the old one where it's like you're like what five different counselors or something, and you yeah. like have to hop between them, and like the kids are dying. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you'd like if you run into Michael, you're kind of fucked because he's very OP. <laughs> yeah, that game was probably like the first horror game I played, and it was scared to crap. Oh, it was so good. I need to like, I need to find that again and revisit it and see if it is like just as hard now as it was when I was a kid. Yeah, because I remember I never finishing it either. Because apparently, you you know, beating it, apparently killing Jason, it was very hard. I never got a chance to. Oh do yeah, that. I ne- no, I never finished it. <laughs> yeah, I have to go through. It. I, had a- I think Gang Grumps did a, like uh, a playthrough of it, and oh. they struggled. A lot of those old games are hard. I have, um, I think I still have it for like Game Boy. Um, oh, really? I never, I never beat it. The Ren and Stimpy game. Oh my <laughs> god! I never got far in that game. God, it I used to love Ren so and Stimpy. <laughs> Granted, I was also a child, but like, well, key, keyword you, you Stu. <laughs> you want to talk about? You want to talk about a hard game? Try playing the Lion King. Oh my god! Uh, Oh my god! I know this. Oh, Still ain't no. beat that damn game. You can get past level two or three. You let me know. <laughs> my my addition to this is uh, Battle Toads. Oh, listen. The original Battle Toads. Yes. I will yes. Play. I'm a Battle Toads fan, and I've beaten Battle Toads. So. Oh my god! Look at that. That's <laughs> that's your bragging rights, because Jesus Christ, that was. It's, hard. I mean, it's hard. Believe me, it's very hard. <laughs> like incredibly hard i i wouldn't i like that's the game that like i seen this meme where someone like i'm in a group and it was a full of like gaming like dads in general and they were talking about dads. <laughs> yeah gaming dads so one of the guys put a meme in there and he's like uh my kid asked me for like such and such for christmas it costs this much it costs like a lot of money and he said i'll buy you this if you can beat battletoads like oh. you know what i mean oh, that's, like that's yeah. awful yeah that, that is that's awful funny. but it, yeah i would do that to mine I'd, like, I'd let you have that this you can beat battle Toads. because the level in general that most people couldn't beat was the um i don't know what they call it but it's yeah the the one where you're riding on the 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 second one speed bikes or yeah and yeah, yeah dodging the, all the obstacles like, yeah, it's uh, pretty hard. like a car a car thing yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the fact that that was the second level in the game, the first level was like okay, yep, still hard, but it, okay, but the second level they were just like, no, oh, no. fuck you. <laughs> it's like retro games didn't give a shit. They were just like, okay, uh, it's because like <laughs> when it comes from like Nintendo, no. I would say like the Japanese audience like didn't care. They would like consume whatever game. But then when they were like localizing it to like yep. American audiences, there was like complaints of like, oh, this is too hard. And so yeah, that's just why we are currently in a modern state of gaming where like yeah. things are generally Me easier either. than they were in like the eighties and the nineties, which like I, yep. I don't care about. And that's like, that's uh that's want something good, harder uh, than you I can say that because it comes it up on like two of the topics yeah. that I wanted to bring up. And one of them were like frustrating games or like hard games, right? Like really hard games and Battletoads is one of them but another one was um another one uh they actually remade this i think on the switch um but it's uh ghost and goblins <laughs> yeah that game is so incredibly hard uh, even yes, back on the yeah, yeah. you had it's to like beat it twice just to get the true ending and um the game loops and it gets harder each playthrough so like and you have to like Oof. oh yeah yeah, it's like it yeah, it's like a, it kinda it's like, a new game plus, like but it, like, like it gets harder. Plus. But you don't unlock the true ending or fight the real boss until you go through the second playthrough and collect and collect all of these oh. things in the game. And for an NES game, that's something oh. to have that type of like, you know, that type of thing. But it's hard. Oh. Yeah, because like, oh. Yeah, because yeah. when you say that, I, I think of Blasphemous, because Blasphemous' DLC has recommended that, like, you finish a run, and then some things oh, aren't wow. even, like, I unlocked that. I, I heard that go one was into, like, the new game hard. plus stuff. Yeah, the, oh. yeah, but I, I recommend Ghosts and Goblins, but, I mean, it is frustrating. It is very it's hard, great. because a lot of people complain, because, like, there's no power meter, which, that doesn't matter to me, but you only get two, you only get two hits and you die. 
right? So, and then you, and if you die, there is no like lives or anything like that. You actually have to start over. So that, yeah, that game was very frustrating. It's still frustrating. I, I played it recently and it's, it's incredibly, incredibly hard. And like games like that and Mega Man games, all those Mega Man games are hard. Oh, I love Mega Man. <laughs> the Mega Man games were hard, but I, I, love, I love Mega them. Man. We'll My favorites are the X series. <laughs> so I, but I love them so I, much. You know, but I like, yeah, they're difficult. Like they are, and you've got to like, you know, yeah, I kind of feel good. like Mega Man was like the whole like roguelike start of things. <laughs> I mean, just because you, you, yeah, because you know, you have to dodge, you have to memorize. Like I, yeah, Mega Man is a very uh, yeah, challenging. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so, yeah, I, those are hard, but, um, but yeah, also, I think that, you know, having hard games is very good, too. But also, like we talked about before, like easy moding games, I think those are okay, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I saw, I saw. discussion with some people on Twitter about that recently. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm, I'm very glad everyone kept it pretty respectful, I feel. Um but yeah, I, I, so like, I love Bloodborne. I haven't finished it yet just because I've been distracted with other things. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty far towards the end. And where, like, where are you at? Um, I just okay. killed, uh, Ebriatus? E Ebritus? Uh, Ebritus, yeah. Yeah. And I'm fighting Martyr Ligarius, who like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I know how to, it's like, I know the theory of how to beat him. I just, you know, I never got good, so I can't like actually do it, but I get it. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the storyline, my next boss is Margo's wet nurse. Yeah. Um, but yes. Like, yeah. So you're pretty is, much cl uh, closing it in. It was Steel Rising that just came out and Steel Rising is like, a, you know, they're marketing themselves as like, oh, it's similar to, um, you know, uh, like Dark Souls, Bloodborne, kind of, um, but it has an easy mode, and some people were complaining about that. And I, I am a staunch believer in things like easy mode. Like, obviously, if if you as a game developer, like that's, I would never ask you to do more work. I would never say, you know, like to FromSoft, like, hey, you need to put in an easy mode. Like, uh, no. But I think that. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate the games that do do that because I I play games for the story and the characters and the environment and like the aesthetics of it. I do not play games for the gameplay and like the game style. I don't play it for a challenge. I don't play it for, you know, like to test myself. And like I I play Bloodborne because I love the world. I love the lore. I do not care about like being the best and I don't have like the time to spend getting good. Like I like playing multiple games. I have like other things. So like, I'm not going to sink in my life into one game in order to like master it in order to be the best. And so like, I really appreciate games that do have things like easy mode because then I can still enjoy the world um, without like having to deal with like, the big difficulty um which like and I, I you know i'm a filthy casual i fully accept that but i don't understand people who like get mad when games add things like an easy mode for players like me who like to you know play a variety because like you still have the harder difficulty like you don't have to play the mode that's made for people like me you still have your challenge if you want it so like why are you mad that I can have more fun? <laughs> like, you can still have fun too! <laughs> so here's the thing, is that adding an easy mode, it, you're not, we're not asking people to take away those, those other uh, modes, like the harder modes, or like just the, the standard mode that you have, you have played and you know and you love. Like, but this is going to help people who have, like, not just, like, a preference of, like, this is what I want out of games, who have, like, actual physical, like, difficulties playing these games, like, who have, like, like, either a neurological thing or, like, a physical, like, thing, like, it's, 
if it's not for you, it's not for you. You don't have to play it. It's not taken away from your game. It's like, it feels very gatekeepy to me. It feels like very like, oh, you can't play this game that I love because you're not at the same skill level as I am. Like you can't, you can't, you can't play this game because you can't do it. And that feels weird to me. Like, um, we have a streamer friend called uh, Cat Girl Next Door. Absolutely, go check out her stream. Lovely, lovely, lovely person. Um, and we had this discussion there a while back because there was somebody in her chat that just wasn't getting it, like wasn't kind of understanding that, like, because they were playing Elden Ring at the time. Um, and like Elden Ring, like it's a FromSoft game. Like we know it's it's gonna be difficult. And like I believe it's ranked as one of the easier in the soul series but regardless it's still it's still a hard game like i've i've been playing it lately um i think i started a couple months ago and like i'm i'm somebody like you guys know i'm somebody that actively tries to break games <laughs> like i i, I speedrun games this is it's something i do something i like i i love like seeing the development of games and like what like goes on behind this like i follow a lot of game devs on twitter and like i keep up with kickstarters and i'm in lots of like game development discord servers and such because i just like to see that but it's like it's they're hard they're very hard games and that's that's coming from me um but the person in chat just wasn't quite understanding that adding like an easier difficulty to a game is not taken away from the game. It's adding something more to the game, therefore increasing the player base, and also increasing the likelihood that these games will get more love. Like, the devs will be like, oh, these games are super popular, we have to do, like, more for them, or, like, maybe we'll release, like, like merch for them, or maybe we'll do, like, if the game, like, needs it, like, a sequel, or some DLC, or something, like, there's like and this is not me saying like like indie devs that just like do it for nothing like don't put love into the games that is absolutely not what i'm saying like uh but I, like the the more that a game is going to get attention the more a triple a game i'll say will get attention like like games like souls games which at this point are pretty much up there in triple a games um the more they get attention the more they're gonna do, the more they're gonna, they're gonna pay attention and be like, oh, this game didn't flop. Like, it's it's cool. Not that they're flopping, mind you, but like... Well, yeah, and that's, but that's the thing, too, because two things I wanna bring up is something I've said to someone before, because I've, I've seen people have these stupid conversations where they're arguing about it, and I'm just like, you know, I've asked someone, and he couldn't really give an answer, but I was just like, what, how does it affect you if I decided to play my game on easy mode necessarily? Yeah. Mm. It's like, like c come on, like, yeah, if like, you have it on PC, people are modding these games to fucking shit. Like, yeah. you go on, like, go on Nexus mods, like, the pages right? for these games are, like, there's so many of them. It's not like yeah. people aren't playing on an easy mode. Like, the easy mod mods, uh, the easy mode mods are there. Like, people right. are playing like this. The, yeah. the difference is that people are are mudding the game to play this as opposed to the game devs putting this in what your problem here is is that you don't want this to be to be in the game from the start you want people to have to go out of their way to do this so that it doesn't yeah. inconvenience you yeah this isn't much. inconveniencing you i'm sorry shock horror yeah <laughs> but it's just like listen if i mean look for me as a as a as a gamer i play for a lot of aspects right i love the world and lore and story of games and i do like a challenge sometimes so yeah i play on normal i don't necessarily put any most games on hard i won't go to mm. hard unless i feel like i need a challenge right yeah. like it you know and, and that's cool like i went through all of elden ring just fine on my you know it was difficult i raged all that good stuff but oh, yeah my you know my, my thing is though like there are you know it's like i said it's it's not hurting anyone to play on easy mode you if you want to play on hard or normal do your thing dude like huh. but i hate when people like trash on people who play on easy that to me is weird but yeah. also like it's you know there are some things that i do like too like um it used to fr it sometimes frustrates me but i remember there are some games where if you play on easy and if you beat <laughs> the them, game well 
they'll yeah. tell you, yeah, play on medium or hard to get the yeah. true ending. <laughs> yeah, that, type of thing. that did that did kind of like it was like an era of gaming that had that in where like if you played on easy <laughs> mode, the game would kind of grief you for it. Yeah, and I was just, I didn't didn't really like that. But um, well, yeah. yeah, generally Same. for me, I like. If like say sometimes some games have like a little subheading on like their their difficulties, um, if it says like oh this mode is recommended, then like generally I'll like I'll at least try and play on that. If it's a horror game, however, I may put it on easy mode, Elite Ice Mission. Um, yep, yep. Um, Soma, I, I I, Soma also has an easy mode, I think. It does. And, um, oh really? Like, I haven't. I haven't really, really played it. I started it, and I think my controller wasn't wasn't cooperating very well with me, so like I switched to something else. But um, <laughs> I uh, I need to play that. It's so good. Yeah. And I. Yeah, I, I think the stuff. I think the easy mode stuff. I just think people just need to get over it. Like if they yeah. want the easy yeah. mode in it, who cares? I, like I, I, what just... I found is that like I I like if I'm streaming a game. I found that I get this weird anxiety of like going on an easy mode because like it's not like a, I don't want people to judge me. It's like a, uh, am I gonna get grief in chat right now? Like I if do. I go on like I, on I easy mode, grief. not that like anybody in my chat would do no. that like like maliciously. Like maybe I'd get like a, a get good because I have a get good emote. <laughs> but yeah, like, that's... Uh, like it's it's one of those things that like I feel like is now kind of ingrained in me as as a gamer. Yeah. Is that like, I, I feel like I have to kind of play at the recommended or like what everybody else is playing at when I'm like playing in front of people, which is not the case. And like, I kind of like, it's just a little part of the industry that I've just kind of don't like. I feel like, like the pressure. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I like growing up, I always played everything on normal mode. Um, and then when I started streaming, at first, I was doing normal mode, but then um, I don't remember what I was playing where I like died a couple times and I just felt like, ah, uh, this isn't really fun, I feel, for people to be like watching me die so much and then I'm like concentrating more on the game, whereas I want to be able to interact with my chat. So now just by default, unless I know it's like going to be an easier game, um, I default to easy mode um, when I stream. On personal games, no. Um, on YouTube, Alien Isolation was the only one where I did easy mode because I knew going into that, that was the only way I was going to get through it. Um, but yeah, like I, I every once in a while, I get a rando in my stream who tries to give me grief about playing on easy mode. And I'm just like, look, if I was playing this game on my own, yeah, I'd do it normal. But like, I want to engage with you. That's why I'm streaming this instead of playing it on my own. Also, like... Hi, who are you? Why are you coming in here and correcting how I'm playing? Like, I I just want to have fun. Exactly. <laughs> like, that's yeah. what games are supposed to be. <laughs> it's just, like, having fun. You yeah. can't, like, dictate it's... to another person how they're allowed to play <laughs> yeah. a game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah, it's, it's so it's stupid. It's sexy gaming, like. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, yeah. I, I understand that, like, these games are games that maybe you have a lot of hours and maybe these are games that you grew up with or something, like, a beloved game to you nonetheless i get it i understand but like in that case you go stream the game play yeah, how yeah. you want to play it it's like I, I i get being excited about a game like i've had to set up commands in my stream before like that like mods or such could like pop if folks come in chat and try to tell me how to play a game because it's like i like if it's a game that i'm fine with people like telling me what to do or like telling me like where where to go if I'm like if I've missed something for example like right. I've been playing Fatal Frame one on Fridays and like there I'm just like you're cool to tell me if I miss something because like <laughs> when it comes to horror games I, I'm just like there's an unlikely chance that I will probably visit this again yeah. um, so I'm fine with you guys being like oh you missed this like go like you gotta go here like. That's fine. But if it's a game that, like, I'm experiencing for the first time and is it a horror game, then, like, I'm... Th it's exactly that. I am experiencing this for the first time. I don't know this at the same level right. as you do. Just let me play this how you played it for the first time. 
But like, yeah, I want you to experience it for the first time, like how we did. So like, not, not the like the vaccine gaming part, but like, yeah, you want to let them experience yeah. it on their own. It's and like, don't, be ex- don't spoil a game for somebody. Like, yeah, because yeah. watching you play it, like I remember the first time I played Fatal Frame, and it's kind of the cool reactions that you have that I had yeah. too, because I love that game. Like, That's- I, I, I. <sighs> I, I hesitate to say this, but I was I was playing Kingdom Hearts One on stream, God, sometime last year, and I never finished it because like I had folks come and chat. Like some of these folks are folks that I've like have been in my chat before, like not like new folks and such that were coming in chat and being like, "Oh, I can't wait until you like get to like this fight," or like, or Aww. like, "Oh, like wait until this happens," or like if I'd like mention a character, it would be just like, "Oh, like." you'll you'll like them later on or like oh like maybe your opinions are gonna change later and such and i'm just like come on like yeah. let yeah. me just fucking play this game right. like so i just i stopped streaming it because i was just like what is the point in me streaming a game that like yeah it's beloved like the kingdom hearts fandom are like like aggressively loyal it's oh yeah it's very lovely to see but it's like what what's the point in me playing this game if yeah. like all that's gonna happen is people are gonna like talk about the game like in chat of like parts that I haven't seen in the game, yeah. or like they're gonna tell me what to do in the yeah. game, or gonna tell me things about the game that I haven't seen yet. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I I don't, I, I guess I don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't either. I like even when I stream a game where I have either played it before or I've like watched it be played before, and like I know what happens even then i try not to say what's coming up because i don't know how many people in chat are experiencing this for the first time so yeah i feel like there should be an understanding like everyone should kind of treat it you know like if you're a streamer or a chatter like let's all just experience this thing together like kind of as if it's new yeah, like, yeah, it's exactly. like uh, yeah. I have I have two points in that. Like I was doing like a challenge run of Pikmin three, which like ends like this Wednesday, um, and like there's like this whole plotline of like they're trying to find their cosmic drive key, um, because they've crash landed on this planet, and th- like that's that's what's missing. They they've lost their cosmic drive key, and this like Captain Olimar apparently has it. And like Captain Olimar is, is a character that um you play as in the first two games. And like we meet a character in the game that like um we think is Captain Olimar. Because like these these characters don't know who Olimar is. Like they're from a completely different planet. And like I know who it is. I know if this is Olimar or if this isn't Olimar. But like my maybe my chat doesn't. So I'm just like, I'll just like call him whatever they're calling him, or like whatever, like um your spaceship starts calling him it's it's that but it's like i just it's, i don't understand like the idea of of people coming in chat and being like oh this is this is my favorite part of of the game that comes up next or something and i'm just like and like they're just like oh i can't wait for you to get to such and such location or like such and such boss fight or or whatever it's like i don't understand <laughs> yeah i don't either i, I, I um, like... that's like um now for me like some of the, like one like the one part you said were like oh, i can't wait for you to get uh you know to see what happens next that part is like for me it doesn't bother me as much but like it does i i got to the point to where like i've had it happen a few times where i'm just like i just flat out don't even care anymore i'm just like dude don't spoil it don't backseat if i don't ask for it then you know whatever like in in my mods like great you know if like i need help like especially if you you search things up for me if i needed it oh, or yeah. you know like you remember codes for me and that type of thing but like mm-hmm. i've had little people come in and just they, they say all that and i'm just like dude no backseating just don't tell mm-hmm. me i don't want to know what and you-, you know they get mad but at the at the point you know at this time now it's just like i don't even care if you get mad if you just you know there's <laughs> a reason why there's chat rules right there in the thing like, yeah, you're supposed to yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah just 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 chill like there's no reason for you like, to do stuff um, like. like you guys know, like uh, Hollow Knight is like probably the game that I, I have the most hours in. Like I I, I know this game, <laughs> and um, a friend of mine who also streams uh, Pie Fluff, um, they started their run of Hollow their first run of Hollow Knight, like I think a couple weeks ago, yeah. and um, I I was in their stream, of course I was, and um, 
they like when they ask me questions because like they'll ask like specifically like like Baka or whoever's in chat that knows like Hollow Knight like I can't, I can't remember the names but um like how do I like like where am I supposed to go like wh or where should I go or like uh should I be here yet or like is there some way to like save but then like I'll say something but it's like yeah. I fully get like when you're like you know so much about this game and like you're watching somebody and like maybe they're like going in a direction that like is like blocked off or like that they can't really do yet in regards to Metroidvanias. Um or like they're going to fight something that maybe they shouldn't fight yet. Like I I, I get the urge to be like, Oh no, don't go there yet. Like it's a, you waste your time. Like I, I get that urge, but it's like there there's a line that yeah. You're you're watching somebody. You've you've chose to come in here, and watch somebody play this game, for more than likely the first time. You yeah. don't ruin their experience. Like you did this when you first like good your first played, yeah. like especially when it comes to Metroidvanias, because like <laughs> usually they don't tell you where to go. They're just like, oh, go and do your own thing. Just fucking don't die. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's what things like whispers are for. Because when we when you were playing Fatal Frame One. Uh, last week, I was definitely messaging with Violet. <laughs> I was like, oh, Bach is going to hate this next room, like right before you went into the doll room. Uh, the doll room. I didn't, know, I didn't know that. That's funny. Oh, man. Dolls are like, my oh, biggest God. fear. Like, yeah. like, uh, like, Laser Fear 1, that whole chapter, I think it was like chapter 3 or 4, where it was like, um, sorry, spoilers for Laser Fear. Um, where like there's like like chapter three or four is just entirely based around dolls and i was like this is the worst fucking time and it was so funny because like the layers of fear streams were like the first streams ever that violet came in and violet was ruthless like because i at the time i had like scare commands like before i'd like transitioned over to like dick spur and such i'd like scare commands yeah, i did too <laughs> violet was ruthless <laughs> <laughs> it's well, no, no. You know, and when you were playing Fatal Frame just recently, I the, I only told you one thing. I think it was when you ran into the um, what's her name, uh, great the, the rope shrine maiden. The, yes, the, the yeah, main, yeah, yeah. And you I, said you I, told me you told me to run, and I was I like, just, okay, I just said because I was definitely gonna I, try and try pitch yeah, her. Like, like I wasn't trying to give away anything. I just like I, I don't remember all that part of the game. Oh, I just see, know. I I appreciate that because like verbally, I was just like, oh no, I have to fight her. Like, yeah, like, I was if, I, say, if, if I couldn't do her. that and like I just wasted my film in a game yeah. like that where it's like uh, like your resources matter, um, yeah. I'm fine with that because it's, yeah, uh, it's if you would have stood like, there and if you would have tried to take a picture, it, you would have yeah, it would have been bad. Oh, That's was it was like, the time where it was the, it's the instant death? The first time. You? Yeah, yeah. It, it, she, yeah, pretty much. And that's why I was yeah. like, just run. Like, yeah. this all I, could say, I just, was like, just run. the first the first time, because I think you I think you fight her a few times from what I've learned. Um but the first time, I think it was kind of like a scripted fight where, like, you yeah. were going to die regardless and it would put you through, like, some, like, cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that, was, that was it. But I was just like, run. I couldn't remember that that was the actual scene. I was just remember when I first seen that bitch, I was just like, let me get out of here. Like, I just remember yeah. being scared of that woman. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I don't I don't like it. I, don't, I think people are a little weird with that. I don't know why they get so... <laughs> super pushy about yeah the game. well see on twitch um for those of you that don't know we can add tags to our stream that viewers can see these tags like yes. they are visible they are there they're like just underneath the stream title like you can't miss them they're on mobile and on desktop <laughs> um usually um if like uh, for me i know but usually you'll see if somebody is playing a game for the first time they'll put like no spoilers and no backseating in there mm -hmm. which means don't fucking ruin the game and don't tell me how to play the game yeah. and it's like uh, <laughs> if you have disregarded this and you are still doing this and like if a mod warns you and you still do this then uh, I'm, I'm sorry but you, you've got what's going to you like <laughs> I, I, not to go back to Hollow Knight, but Phoenix Downer, Brittany, was um, was playing Hollow Knight for the first time. And there was like, in the first stream, our first two streams, there was this one guy that would just, was just keep saying shit about the game. And like, Brittany had just started this game. Like, Brittany's not gonna have seen these like, these mid-game bosses by now. <laughs> like, 
And it's like, come on, like, shut up. So, like, the amount of messages that I had to delete from him. And there was, oh, like, yeah. some folks that were, like, whispering me, just like, I said, okay, if I say this. And, like, I'm just like, if if Brittany hasn't gotten to it yet, then no. Like, yeah. just let, let, let them play the game. <laughs> right? It's not I, that hard. Just just yeah. watch people play the game and react to it. Yeah, I I'm had like, two instances of that. Well, one of them is kind of weird. But one, I was in my be- uh, dear friend, Toilet Pony, uh, <gasps> Great guy. Oh, Toilet Pony is an awesome guy. And uh, he was playing uh, The Walking Dead, um, like the Telltale the games. Telltale games? Yeah. yeah. And I'm watching, I'm chilling, I'm doing whatever also. And I see all of a sudden someone pops in the chat and just gave away the whole ending as soon as he walked, got it, jumped in the chat, like his whole paragraph. Mm, I fucking and I'm just, hate that. Yeah, and I'm just like, what the? Like, I mean, I, I just banned him. I didn't even time out. I'm just like, man, bye, goodbye. Like you know, like you did know, did uh, did he see that before you got rid of it? No, he he didn't see it. Oh thank god! god. But oh, good. I I, good. I immensely just saw it. Like instantly, I knew what he was doing, and I was just like, bye. Like you know, and then the second thing, it kind of, this is kind of a reverse thing. I remember, I don't know if you remember this or not, Gray, but we were uh, modding in your chat. I don't know what you were playing, but I remember um, you were uh, you were playing something that I had played before or that I played before i don't remember what it was but you had specific not specific you specifically asked for help in a way you were just wondering um you were confused on where to go and i gave you a hit you had asked for like some type of hint or something and i don't know who it was in the chat but he was just like you need to let her figure it out for herself and i'm just like Dude, chill. <laughs> like i yeah. don't oh, yeah. i don't know you and for one like she asked for help. Shut up. Like, I just wanted to say <laughs> it in the chat, but I didn't. But I'm just like, I just said, no, I just you're said, welcome to do that. Yeah, because, like, if I if I get stuck in a game, I will often ask chat and, like, you yeah, guys yeah. or, like, Catharsis or Lazy New Yorker. Like, you guys are all very quick to just be like, okay, here's, like, a hint. It's like, great. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to tell me exactly where to go, but, like, I, let's be real. I have a lot of really dumb moments in, oh. in games See, and in life. So I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just get so I'm just like just give me like a hint so I can get an idea and usually that's all I need. Like, yeah. It's it's so funny. I take this from Cordelia Chase because like I, I heard it from her first. But um, streamer brain, it definitely a thing. <laughs> yeah. Like you're like you've lost maybe like half of the brain you had when you start streaming. <laughs> It's so true yeah, though, because it's like you're aware that you're being watched and you're also like yep. trying to engage in chat while also playing <laughs> it. So it's like so much and making sure like nothing is going wrong technically. There are just mm-hmm. so many things that you're being focused on that yeah, yeah. It, it, it's you're not gaming at your full potential. Yeah, it, that is so <laughs> true. That is so true because I do it too. And then I end up realizing I'm doing so horribly in the game. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, yeah, it, it it happens. Hell yeah. But that's just, I just had to bring it up because I was like, that was kind of like this thing in reverse where like I give you a hit and he's just like, let her figure it out her first herself. I'm just like, dude, shut up. Like, right? just, I don't know. Just rub me the wrong way that day. I was just like, okay, yeah, whatever guy. It's like, <laughs> dude, do you, do you want us to just be here for 20 minutes where I'm trying to figure it out? Or can we just like move on in the game? <laughs> <laughs> right, because he probably would have like probably tried to jump in himself at some point. Like, you need to go here, do this, and go there. I'm like, you know, like you know, give it a rest. Yeah, like I'm, it's, it's okay, like, bro. I promise. <laughs> viewers, lovely dearest viewers, if you have played a game that we are playing and we are being fucking stupid when we are playing this game, message a mod. First and foremost, just just de- just whisper a mod and be there like, can I say this in chat? And right. for me, it would be probably Violet that would respond to you and be like, yeah, this is funny. <laughs> or I, I, I get the, you know, just like That's gentle, true. just like, hey, would you like a hint for this right. thing? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. totally cool with you, like, saying something like that. Because then I can decide, right. like, uh, I think I can figure it out. Or, God, no, I am so stuck. Please help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I get God. That completely. What are your favorite twists in video games? Because I was thinking about it there, and I was just like, oh, I don't actually yeah, think I know this about you guys. Oh, yeah. I I've... Personally, I don't know if I would see it as a twist, but when I first played it, I wasn't as perceptive. And, like, the the bit at the end of um, these, uh, I'm assuming, a spoiler alert for this entire section. Yeah, we um, should definitely put a but, Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, but, uh... 
I, like the end of Alex Spencer's Returns when like it's like oh your therapist was mm. behind this all along like yeah. when I first played this when I was like what 14 or something like I, I, I didn't really see that coming I should have in hindsight after I've played it but like uh, like I, I saw that and I was just like oh oh shit <laughs> I it was oh, uh, yeah. I you during a memory that you recover in I think it's the fourth part in the castle. Right. I figured it out and I like audibly gasped. I didn't <sighs> I didn't see it coming until then and then it all yeah. clicked of what happened. I was like, <gasps> yeah. "Oh my god." <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was And then like cool it's like you think back to some of the old memories that you got where like I think it was the sister was saying that like he would like come and visit her and such, and you're just like, "Oh my god!" That's yeah, I remember that too. That yeah, that was a really good twist. That was definitely one of my favorites too. Um, also, um, well, yeah, spoiler. I like you said, spoiler alert for this whole section. So I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, put that up. up like a screen and save yeah. the games and then give time codes to like skip. <laughs> right, because one that I'll bring up. Um, there's two actually, but one of these is my favorite, which is um. Uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Okay. Right? So the reason why I say this is because, you know, when you play through the game, you don't necessarily... Th there's a lot to do in Castlevania Symphony of the Night. There's multiple endings. There's a part where you can just go and you can fight the final boss, which um, is, well, it's not the true final boss. But you don't know this until you do a few hidden things by accident, like kind of exploring. So when you beat the game for the first time, like I, the first couple times like I did, you know the game ends you get this ending and it's kind of weird but when you get further and you actually like start unlocking a lot of more like areas to explore and you go through the entire castle and get items you find out that this whole castle there's an inverted castle so like you got to go through the whole entire castle again but it's upside down and it's a whole new story all new bosses in every single room all new stuff to get to the true boss. And I think that was probably the greatest thing I I remember because no one told me that when I was playing. Like I didn't have a guide. I didn't like, you know what I mean? I just remember like going through it one day like, "Oh, I've never been here before. Let me try this." And then next thing I know, I'm unlocking all these things. And then here comes this boss and he's like, "There's another castle over there." And I'm just like, "What? In the hell is this?" <laughs> like it's this is incredible. Like, yeah, so yeah, that's one of my favorite twists um in games that was the most memorable for me a game that came out last year little nightmares 2 so six was kidnapped and then you come into like this whole weird area and like six is massive and also relatively aggressive and then like you progress across this and she gets a, a lot more aggressive and then you kind of you, you revert her back to her normal form and um it, it gets kind of weird but then, like, right at the end of the game, there's, like, this chase sequence. And, like, s like Six makes it to, like, the safe platform. And then, like, the platform under you, like, breaks and you jump. And, like, she catches you. But then she doesn't pull you up. And she just flings you off to the side. And you're just like, what the fuck? Six, how dare you? And then you find out, A, that this was a prequel. Um, and... Like, because, like, right at the end, you see a poster for the Maw, which is where Six goes in the first game. And also you see that this is a fucking time loop, actually. Um, this whole game, it's a time loop. And the character Mono that you've been playing is actually that dapper man that was kind of chasing you around, like, after a certain point in the game. And I was mind blown. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, how dare you? Um, I was, I was mind blown. I was like, what the fuck just happened? And I watched so many people stream the end of this game, stream the game, but stream the end of this game. And a lot of us had the same reaction where I was like, fuck you, Six. <laughs> we saved you so many times. Oh God, I forgot which Metroid game actually released it but like it was when like samus took off her helmet and like yes. everyone was just like she's a girl yeah. uh, like, was that the first it was might have been og metroid yeah it OG been. metroid yep but like NES. people were people were pissed about it and i was just oh, like this yeah. is the most iconic thing ever actually a woman <laughs> be the hero i know 
<laughs> yeah, that's weird. I I don't understand why people. I never knew that people were pissed about it. I thought it was cool because you know because oh, yeah. she does the same thing in SNES version too. But it, yeah, that's that's really odd. <laughs> but oh, yeah, I don't know. That was I, I so think cool. Isn't that's there, still cool. Isn't there a twist in the Bioshock games? I forgot. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. there is. It, it is really good. Um, but well, Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite both have twists. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Bioshock, the first one, would you kindly? Very, very iconic twist. Um, I know that. That, yeah. that, that sentence. <laughs> yeah. So like when you, so you're, so the first Bioshock, you're on a plane, you're going somewhere your plane is down and you end up you know like there's this tower in the water and so like you go into the tower and it it's just like this bath sphere and it takes you into rapture and so you're stuck there um but you pick up a thing where like this guy is communicating to you and they're just like hey you want to leave i want to leave my family's in danger all of that like would you kindly help me um so that I can also help you. And um, you, like, go through the majority of the game uh, targeting this guy who uh, runs the city, um, Andrew Ryan. And when you... So, you know, you're, like, taking out all these things and, like, getting closer and getting closer, and you finally, like, get there. And he's there, and he's just like, do you remember the phrase, would you kindly? Do you remember your childhood? Oh, yeah. All that's fake your memories are a science experiment and would you kindly is your dog whistle cue to do anything that comes after that oh nothing oh you've been my doing god has been your own choice holy you shit you are just a slave to the word so that like that's when he like screams the whole like a man chooses a slave obeys and then he just is like would you kindly kill me and like oh. it's it's so good. It's fantastic! Fantastic! Oh, that whole have, scene is so good. Have Beautiful. you both uh, played Final Fantasy VII? Yes. Uh, uh, not all of it. Love Final okay, Fantasy VII. but I know I'll, it. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm gonna say, yeah. 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 Uh, the Aerith stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mean when that the one drowns her? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, I, I can't speak much about that because I I don't know a lot about it, but I I know that that was one that really broke a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. it was because it was like in RPGs, the characters, the main characters, normally didn't die, mm -hmm. so it was just um, like this, you know, like whoa. So, yeah. a a big one for me. Um, do you guys have you guys played Shadow of the Colossus? Yes. No. Oh, I know what you're oh, talking about. Yes. It's one of it's in my top ten games. Beautiful. Like game. it's it's such a great game. It's boss rush the game, yes. But it's great. Um <laughs> great do you mind if I talk about this? Because I know you said that you didn't. Oh no no no. Oh yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Ahead. So um when you start this game, I don't remember if it's your girlfriend or your sister that um you're essentially trying to save because she is or either dead or dying. Your sister. I'm uh, kidding. Not today. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, but, Whoa. <laughs> I, I saw the opportunity. I couldn't resist. Mm. Sister wife. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so I, I don't remember who it was. But um, she's either dead or almost dead. And you cross this like forbidden bridge into this land. And like there are people that are chasing you. But, like, they get there, like, soon after you do. Because you've stolen this sword, which is, like, sacred as well. So, like, not only have you crossed this, like, forbidden bridge, but also you've stole the sacred sword. Um, and you go and seek out this deity called um, Dorman. And he's just like, in order to save your sister, you have to go slay these, I think, 13 beasts? Um, 13 or 16, I don't remember. Um, and like after each one of them their soul like kind of enters you but you look like you are in absolute fucking agony when this happens and um like you don't kind of notice it like uh, for a bit until it gets the latter ones but you are slowly kind of like your your skin and your features and such are slowly being warped if you will like you you look like this is affecting you 
is what I'm trying to get to here. And once you've done all of this and you come back to Dorman and like all of the statues in this temple, because the statues correspond to different like creatures, the different massive colossus that you need to like defeat. They all of them are broken. Um, you go back to Dorman and be like, uh, yo, did it, Lamau. Um, uh, no, he was the bad guy all along, and you're following instructions to free him. Um, and he uh, possesses your body, um, c- becomes this massive fucking thing, and, like, as these people that have been, like, chasing you down, like, they get here, like, n- n- nah, like, fuck, you're, uh, everything gets fucked up. And like then like it ends where like yeah his 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 little comeback didn't last very long, but it's like you end and like your sister does get up like she does like end up being resurrected, but also you are also there's a baby there so also maybe you were reborn question mark question mark Re- rebirth in video games always goes over my head, like Silent Hill one. Like, where the, like, rebirth at the end of that, I was like, what's going on here? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, like, look it up after I was like, what just happened? Like, rebirth yeah. in video games just goes over my head for whatever reason. But that one yeah. got me, because I was like, I was fully like, nah, nah, this game wouldn't do this to me. <laughs> nah. <laughs> and it did. And the funny thing about that, too, um, I didn't notice this either until maybe like a while afterwards somebody made me notice this. But you know when you play that and you kill all the beasts, um, the the colossal like that you ever notice that when they die, it plays this really sad music. Yes, yeah. And you don't like you don't necessarily think about that when you're playing. But the reason why they play that sad music is because you're not supposed to kill them. Yeah, and, and it, it know, pains me because these these weren't like besides one of them. Like these weren't like dangerous creatures. They they were just existing. They were just yeah. going about their days. Like especially like the first couple that are like, oh like there's very little way that you would probably die to these, like, the first few colossus. Like, and, like, yeah. it, it hurts, because I was like, I don't want to kill these. Especially the fifth one, like, Avion, the bird one, and you're in this, like, yeah. watery arena. That's my favorite, because I was like, this is great. Like, <laughs> I actively was like, I don't want to do this. Like, they're just babies. Just be babies. That's actually why yeah. I've never played the game, and I don't think I ever will, because I'm just like, <laughs> no, they just look like they're just chilling. I don't yeah, want to go like, kill them. <laughs> I, like, outside of, like, the last Colossus, which the last Colossus is absolutely one. Well, there's a couple that are kind of hostile. But, like, this one is, like, they they have actively imprisoned this colossus um he cannot fucking move because they he's been imprisoned like he is hostile upon the absolute second that he fucking sees you like like that one is the uh, like the hostile there's a couple like smaller ones that like people don't really like them um but they they're definitely hostile towards you they're like they're kind of like bulls in a way um and there's like of course if like you're you're in a colossus's way like sometimes there's ones that will absolutely kind of like be like oh who are you what are you doing here (laughs) but like for the most part they don't really care like there's one that is absolutely 100 percent like a pacifist just fucking flying around the air it's doing its own thing massive thing and you come up to it with your host called aggro and just shoot its fucking sex and you just you just deflated and you're just like i got feel bad because i'm just like this motherfucker this is this is a gorgeous like a gorgeous being look at it it's a it, it's a sky dragon which is otherwise known as a dragon but like like <laughs> I felt bad about it, but it is absolutely one of my favorite games because the soundtrack is amazing. And the only complaint I have is that the horse physics are a bit weird. <laughs> but it <laughs> yeah, is an older true. game, so that's yeah. fair. Yeah, it is. But that, that's a phenomenal game. Yeah, that was a very heartbreaking one. The remaster was good. The PS4 yeah, remaster it looked was good. really cool. I think I got the remaster maybe on, well, I think it was on PS Plus, I believe. Maybe that's right. Yeah. I, I, I recently played it, like, I think within the last year. Mm-hmm. Um, another twist of mine would probably really quick would be Resident Evil One. Um, when you find okay. out Wesker was working with Umbrella, yeah, 
I yeah, that one also hits me because like I mean I love Resident Evil so, but it was just fascinating to see when you're when you know as a kid playing this and I remember just like I think it, I pieced it together once I saw that that film, like there's a part in the game where you see the film, and you're sliding yeah. through and it's you remember that like it's yeah. showing all of the like the enemies and all of a sudden it shows the the Umbrella Research Team and you immediately knew it was Wesker because of course he has those fucking glasses on you know those shades well, that he wears it. all the time. You know, and it's like, what? But then, but the main, the, the other twist too was when you get to a certain part, you got to fight the tyrant that he releases and the the tyrant actually kills it like in the, the original and you, you know, and then you, you go through that and there's like self-destruct, you know, all that stuff and you, you get out of there. But, um, needless to say after, I don't know how, I don't know when it was revealed, revealed, but, um, Wesker actually didn't die. He injected himself with the T virus to survive, pretty much, and that's why he's in like RE five and all that stuff. Mm. But yeah, that that was a pretty good twist. I I one of my favorites too was Resident Evil. Uh, I have two. I I don't know because one of them you haven't played, and I think you might, so I don't know if you would it be to. Resident Evil two. No, it's uh, no Silent Resident Evil two, Hill Silent Hill two. Pardon. Yeah. Oh, um, Silent Hill two. Ooh, yeah. That's one of them. I, so I don't I, have to talk about that I one. I n- kind of know what the, I, I the twist is. I have another one that's like my favorite. Okay. Um. So this one, I haven't personally played it yet. It's It's been on my backlog for like ever. Um. I need to just play it. Um. But The Witch's House? Mm. Oh, I, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. Because the uh, School of thread puppet show like i love that song um so i talked about it on last week's episode for the soundtrack um the witch's house really really cute spooky fun puzzly so you are this girl who's trapped in the witch's house and the house won't let you leave um and it's uh, low-key trying to kill you so <laughs> you have to go around and like kind of solve these puzzles and explore through the house um and you get like closer and closer and eventually you find like the monster who's like this girl who's been deformed and she's like chasing after you and trying to kill you and you find out you did a body swap spell you're the witch that's your body that's your body that you maimed that way you could escape in the other girl's body and in the end you get out and she is crawling after you, no eyes or legs, because that's what you did to yourself before doing this body switch self so that she couldn't defend herself. You meet up with her dad and her dad sees this monster chasing after his little girl and kills it. Oh, uh, wow. uh, wow. and then you in this other girl's body walk away with your new dad. Uh, oh. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I was like, that not is... only was that such a twist if you're the villain the whole time trying to escape your own house, but also like the brutality of the ending. Uh, yeah, that's brutal. <sighs> so, I mean, so good. That makes me want to play it too, even. I know, in... it's like, I yeah. need to play it. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> so. And. I, I I think I know what the twist in Silent Hill 2 is, just because I said I used to watch, like, top 10 lists and such. Because, like, I used to watch them for, like, games that I thought, like, I, I wouldn't play or, like, I wouldn't have the means to play. Because I, I only got my PC, like, my, like, this PC, like, last year and my other PC, like, the year prior. Like, my, my shitty PC, <laughs> like, year prior. <laughs> so, like... I, I used to watch like top ten lists on these games that I'd be like, no, nah, I'll never be able to play because I have a MacBook. <laughs> no, I, so. I used to watch playthroughs all the time. I mean, I still watch some, but I would yeah, I'd yeah. watch a lot of playthroughs and be like, do I actually want to buy this game? Because like, I'm broke. Yeah, I can't afford right. every game. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely save Silent Hill 2 for your playthrough when you get through it because regardless, there are more than just that one ending twist. Too, oh. You? That's there, true. Well, well, Grace knows what I mean. Like, there's that main ending twist, but there's also a lot of things in that game that, like, happen. The why or the, they explain why it happened. There's a lot of things you don't know what's going on at first, and you're like, oh, I like. I, I'm pretty sure, like, you know what I mean, Gray. Like, Maria is that her name? So yeah, yeah. So like, you know, there's a few things in there that are 
kind of like oh there, i think there's like maybe like two twists in that as well so, so. the main one though that was the like oh yeah to, like yeah play. for sure <laughs> so yep. have you guys played heavy rain yes i have that on my <laughs> list by the way and yes oh amazing I it, yeah so right you could talk about it since it was on your list oh okay so yeah so heavy rain uh this the twist that you you meet um well, you play multiple characters, as you know. Yeah. Like your son gets kidnapped. It's you have like the origami three? killer. Three players, I think you. Yeah, players. I think you play three characters, and one of them you play is the detective, who his name is Scott Shelby. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just playing as him, you're the you're the detective um, who's helping uh, one of the families, but you're trying to find the origami killer, which is um, like a serial killer that's been kind of going around. Yeah, the serial killer. Yeah, he's been going around, and I, I believe it was the one that was responsible for like kidnapping one of the main character's sons. Uh, you know that they never found and all that stuff, but all the but what the great end twist ending is that Scott Shelby, the detective, is the origami killer, and the way that it reveals is weird because you are playing as this detective solving these crimes. You know what I mean? You're literally solving your own murders through this entire game, so it completely throws you off the entire time. And that re the, I haven't played this in a while, but the reveal I remember just like playing that and i'm just like you have got to be shitting me like i was making because you got to make decisions in heavy rain right so and, and i'm just sitting there thinking like i made all these decisions to protect this asshole and he's the one that killed everybody <laughs> like you know what i mean like you get what i mean it's like ah, oh, like if i had the idea and the, if the game wouldn't like in i would just let him die but like yeah that was a good twist i was mad at the the I mean, not that, like, end, end moment, I understood and was just like, yeah, there's no way not to say that. But can I just say I'm mad at Joel for saving Ellie? Because I'm mad at Joel for saving Ellie. Like, I'm sorry, I know you've, like, bonded with this child, but, like, she's literally the key to saving everyone. Like, I I I'm, I'm sorry, I know it sucks, but, like, let her die. <laughs> let her save you it was like, it was heartbreaking person. though like to to kind of find out like oh shit yeah. this 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 kid that we've been with the entire journey uh we had she's got to die like, it wasn't yeah. even heartbreaking i was just like yeah. oh, no. <laughs> i know i, know, I yeah suck, but I, just, I don't know i i'm mad that I'm, I'm mad that he saved her <laughs> Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. to feel about the ending, really. I I, I get that too because I'm just like, well, maybe they should have, but then you know, whatever you you know. Well, it, also because I think maybe because that ending to me, though I love Last of Us, I just think that ending to me, especially that last part, was just kind of bland to me. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I it just kind of ended on this like, so that was it. Like I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> I also I from I like the ending ending of when he. Uh, like I was mad when they announced The Last of Us Two, which I never played and I never will. Um, because <laughs> ten out of ten. They, I I just I <laughs> the way that they ended it with him lying to her. I and I was just like, there's no way to continue this story and maintain this relationship that they have. They are yeah. going to like. Uh, at least I was fully convinced, like they were going to ruin what was so special about one. Yeah. And from the reviews, people were really mad at two. So I'm just like, I feel like maybe my fears were were warranted. Yeah, Again, I haven't I, played it myself because I'm ideally I will not. But like, yeah, I haven't played it either. So. Do but. you guys care if I talk about God of War? No problem. No, I, I think okay. I know this. I think I yeah. Know. So like yeah. yeah, I know yeah. Close to the end of the game, it's like revealed that like Kratos' son is is a god, which like kind of saw it coming because like of course title of the whole series and also like you know like kind of saw that coming with like how the games are, but <laughs> the revelation that he is Loki, like you know. The, the Norse god of, of, of mischief. Uh, I didn't see that coming. I was just like, oh, this is where we're going with this. Okay. It was, it was like, they, they, they did drop some hints throughout the game. Like, they were quite clever with it. 
But like, I, I don't know, still to this day, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. Um, cause like, I like, I liked him as like a kid and it would have been very cute if he was just like, just a normal kid that's like now just having to survive in this kind of world. Whereas like his dad has like this super crazy fucking history and is being hunted <laughs> like by fucking gods, essentially. Um, which fair. It would have been mean, cool. From, from the earlier games, I feel like he might deserve it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, yeah. I can do, yep. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, uh, no, you're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I do. Uh, I yeah. like them, though. They're, yeah, they're that good war is games. great, though. Oh, yeah. I, I've still got a, well, like I said, I, I already knew the uh, ending to a one, which um, which was fine. There are sometimes some games they can spoil for me that it doesn't affect me. I don't know why, but <laughs> that but I, I already knew the ending to that one before finishing it. Um, I don't know how I knew. I think it might have been like some maybe top ten list thing, like you like you <laughs> watch because I, I watch a lot of those too. So I yeah. So that's this is me, but. Um, what other um, like hot topics do you have that you wanted to bring up, Gray? Ooh, uh, well, I know that one of the things that's being discussed right now, actually speaking of Last of Us, is uh, remakes of games that are still relatively recent. So like how they just re like there's The Last of Us and then there was already a Last of Us remastered and now there's Last of Us Part 1. Uh, uh, like, in my opinion, why? Like the other games are still playable and available. The yeah, I don't, I don't get it. The Last of Us was like PS3, it. was it not? But I then there was a PS4 was... remaster. Yeah, uh, and now there's a new one that is just again oh, yeah. update and graphics, and I think they're still charging like seventy bucks for it. And the original like... game only came out in 2013. Like yeah, that's less than yeah. ten years ago. Yeah. It's still so recent, and and the remaster is you know on the PS4, which I still consider a current console, and yeah. so I just I don't. The remaster was 2014, yeah. which feels weird that like it you have weird. the original game in 2013 and the remaster in 2014. Well, like I think that was I know it's like from PS4 like please yeah, but oh, like, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, see, and this is how like I feel too about that because though it's an older game, it came out around 2006. They keep remastering and re, uh, re-releasing Resident Evil 4. Yeah. And now yeah, we're getting yeah, a remake of Resident Evil 4. And I'm just like, how many times are you going to release Resident Evil 4? It's like, like, it's like I, Skyrim, it's, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, yeah. I was just, that's what I, I say that all the time. I said Resident Evil is like Skyrim, but Resident <laughs> Evil has been released more than Skyrim. Which it, Resident Evil has been released for the GameCube, the PS2, the PS3, Xbox, the the uh, I'm pretty sure the Wii. It's on and, Steam now as well. Yeah, Steam. Yeah. It's been released on the I, PS4. I have it on Steam. Yeah, and it's you know yeah it's been released on the PS4, the Xbox One. It's been on every generation of consoles since the GameCube and PS2, dude. And it's like, how many times are you going to do it? Like a remake of four. Like, I know people consider that one of the greatest games of all time, one of the greatest Resident Evils of all time. It's a great game, but I don't think it's the greatest in my point of view. Um, the original three were the greatest, and Code Veronica is what we all want as a remake. That's Code just Veronica me. Code Veronica is one of the ones I don't own. Like, I don't Same. own um, two and three or their respective remakes. Yeah. Now it's on um, PS2. You can definitely I, play I don't have Code Veronica. And um, seven is on Game Pass, but I haven't played it, and I don't own eight. Yeah, and now the the only remake of Part Four, well, well, yeah, it's considered remake. The only remake of Part Four that I actually do enjoy is the VR release because it was rebuilt from the ground up for VR, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah, and that's and that's it, a it's a great game. Way to play it, you know, because like it wasn't normally yeah. a, a a a VR first person thing. So like that kind of remake, I feel is fair because it is an entirely I think exactly. it's the same game, but it's an entirely different way to experience it. But yeah. all these things that are just like, oh, but we made the graphics more up to date. Like, yeah, and the right. like, original graphics aren't like that bad. So I, yeah, I just, I feel like anytime it's just 
like a weird cash grab. Like it, it is, it is, it's uncontrollably bad. Like when it comes, like when we were watching Nintendo Direct, like when they were, excuse me, they were doing like those those remasters and stuff. Those are cool because some of those games are entirely old, but they haven't been released for every generation mm. either. Like Resident yeah. Evil Four at this point. I like but speaking it, of that, like. A Nintendo Direct um, announcing uh, GoldenEye. Like, yeah. I'm almost yeah. sure there was a remake of it at one point that it just was. didn't go over well. It was. It was on PS3. I had it. And it was oh, really? just, yeah, it was completely re- yeah, remade. The graphics, I mean, it was just a remade game. Everything looked so great. The graphics looked awesome, but yeah, it, it just didn't really go over well. Nobody cared, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. It, but yeah, that was a bad one. But I agree. But like, I, th- I don't understand the new graphics or the new remake stuff. Yeah, but like the the two main things that like I was excited about the Nintendo Direct was, um, of course, Fatal Frame Four finally <laughs> coming to the West. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, so happy. Um, and then also Story of Seasons, a uh, wonderful life, which like that. Yes. I mean, I'm so excited just because of inclusivity, but also like the original was, you know, a, a couple of generations ago, I believe. Like. So it's not really on a more current gen console and hasn't been made a billion times. So it's just like, I, oh, this is, I accept I, this. <laughs> I just looked it up because I was curious of like the Resident Evil 4 stuff. Eight times. Eight oh times. I just yeah. sent you a visual of it. Of like what somebody's visual was. Eight different times. And it doesn't look any different. Any of these times. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep <laughs> that's what i mean it's been released like i that's more than skyrim i'm pretty sure if i remember right yeah yeah that's yeah, I think yeah. skyrim is only like what five or six times yep which like very weird scene only, only. five or six <laughs> right? yeah. but um yeah to, it's crazy. I still, oh i still need to beat i have skyrim on ps3 it's just the plain og and i, I still haven't beaten it it's the final dragon uh, man Oh, I, yeah. um, I haven't beaten to, it. To piggyback off if you're talking about Nintendo Direct just there, um, very excited for Pikmin 4. Um, I, I will be pre-ordering that as soon as I can. We don't have a date for it yet, but I think they said 2023. Um, I will be pre-ordering that. I did pre-order Pikmin 3 Deluxe because Pikmin 3 is one of my favorite games. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so excited. I screamed. <laughs> when I came up on the direct and bless bless my poor poor partner who had to deal with me having like like the biggest fangirl moment I think I have ever had in my entire life because I was like we have waited so long for this um of course we got uh spoilers for anybody who doesn't want to know um we got the the Breath of the Wild 2 news we know when the release date is we saw more footage which was a great trailer um and that's another game that I will spend a very, very, very long time playing. Um, God, there was another one that I was super excited for as well, and it's it's totally it's it's left my mind. <laughs> I feel Splat that though, three, I'm, a... I'm I'm relatively excited for. I'm excited for the that story of cool. seasons one. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Mario Party one and two being ported over to Switch. Very oh, that's cool. About that. Yeah, that is kind of cool. <laughs> the Mario Party game. So much. The original Mario Party. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I remember yeah. that too. <laughs> I think I have it on Wii U. You know, because they used to have them on like the stores on like Wii and Wii U. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, they, I, that's cool. I need to go and and uh, get me a Switch. Go on and get me a, a Switch. Go <laughs> get. I, I, a friend of mine, T8, uh, texted me when Fatal Frame 4 was announced, and I, like, I was, like, half asleep, and it was like, who's texting me? How dare you? And then I saw what it was, and I <laughs> literally sat up in bed, immediately texted Rain, <laughs> and said, oh my god, and you see, like, start freaking, freaking out, um, immediately added it to my Steam wish list when I saw oh, that, because yeah. at first I was like, I need a Switch. And then it was like cross pl- like all the different platforms. So it was like, never mind, I'm adding it never to my mind. Steam wish list. And then <laughs> yep. I saw the story of seasons part and I was like, Never, never mind. mind that, never <laughs> mind. I still need a switch. <laughs> right? I still want to switch. <laughs> Great thing about Switch is like as same with like like PS4 and such, is that like if you log into somebody else's switch, like via their details, um, you can like play the games that they have, like digitally. 
So like, yeah. if I gave you guys like my Switch login, you'd be able to play like all the games that I have digitally. Like, of oh, course like you play sharing. them like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course you play them like via my account. Like you just go and click yeah. my little profile and play them by that. So like, it's not as good as as I would say the PlayStation One is, where you can like play them via your account. But um, yeah, so, well, so wait, does that well, how is writing the... your saves if it's like an auto save situation? Could I risk damaging your file um, in your game? Like, in regards to like, say, Breath of the Wild, probably. But like, okay. a lot of the games that I have on Switch that I've played, I'll say, like, have the option of like multiple saves. Now, what about okay. like um, compared to like PlayStation? Because like PlayStation like four, right? Like you can share at least one. You can game share between two systems with one person, right? So you can play all the games on the other account as long as you, you know, like you have to do like some weird thing where you like sign into the other person's yeah, account on your PlayStation. Yeah, and like the primary thing. Yeah, the primary thing. And then you can play I, all I them. I would say like I prefer PlayStation's one. Like, yeah, there's a couple extra steps. But like there, like you can play them via your, your account. You just have to go and like uh, I think download okay. it. And then like you won't risk their saves. Whereas, like, oh. on Switch's version, it's kind of like a, oh, this is a new Switch? You just add uh. your account to a new Switch? Uh, Same details? Yes? Yes, yes? It's like, it's like essentially that. I got you. Uh. I, I tell you one thing that PlayStation does that I really want other systems to do. Um, PlayStation has this thing called SharePlay. Mm -hmm. And the where you can go into a chat party and you can share your screen. And you can yeah. either play two, oh two players on a game or they can take over your game and play. Oh my like, god, I wish Nintendo had that. Nintendo, please. I know you're listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish, yeah. Nintendo HQ is just like, how do they know? How do they know? <laughs> yeah, I, that, that would be cool. I, I wish more would implement that because um, that's actually what's convinced me to buy some games, too. Because mm -hmm. I you know, got to try it out before I just go doesn't, and see it. Doesn't Steam also kind of have that? They do. Um, certain games have the share play thing. I don't know what it's called on Steam, but um, one of them is a recent game I bought, which was uh, the new uh, uh, TMNT Shredder's Revenge. Oh, you can yeah, actually yeah. play that uh, remote play that with someone else. I can just invite someone to play. And they don't even have to own the game. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. And Far Cry done that. that too. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah, Far Cry, if I remember, let you play the game and you didn't even have to have it. I think it was Far Cry five no four or five one of them, one of them i care i only yet. played three aka three was the only one i played I, as I yeah that one. i love that one. i mean that's one of my favorite villains boss yeah he's great he is one i want to learn ones. his insanity monologue and do it for an audition oh my god no full well that no one at that table is gonna know what that is from and right horrify them <laughs> do it gray you should do it um, dang oh, it i'm gonna need that just... recorded uh <laughs> <laughs> so the guy that played um, him actually redid that whole scene oh really? um <gasps> yeah. it's on youtube yeah he, he redid his whole scene uh one of his scenes from that game it was really really awesome so uh, yeah he was yeah he's one of the best villains i agree too and matt speaking <laughs> of favorite villains <laughs> This no, go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, sorry, this is just such an aside because it's like, oh, that's a monologue from a video game that I just really want to do. There actually is another monologue from a game I want to do. Uh -huh. But uh -oh. um, I don't know if anyone, how familiar uh, everyone is with Deadly Premonition. Um, the correct <laughs> answer is entirely familiar because it's an amazing game and you should all go play it. But there's a scene where this woman is giving a monologue. But the thing is, so like gross grossness, um, her tongue has been cut out. Oh. And she has oh, like yeah. seeds in her mouth. So you like, you know, like she's not she's not gonna make it to the next scene. But she just like stands up and starts doing this big monologue. It's just so <laughs> weird. So she, she sounds like this, Bane from the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> you were molded so, by it. But she's like so <laughs> into it, even though, I mean, like it's subtitled, but like, you, you know, no one in that room can understand a word this lady is saying. <laughs> but everyone's just like so into it, and she's like so passionate giving this monologue. And I'm like, 
I really want to reenact this monologue. <laughs> you really should. We've got to get the. We got to get something like this from Gray. We have to have Gray do these monologues. I, I totally will. I totally Gray, will. How, I can, how many I subs? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but speaking of that your favorite villains like besides Voss, who are your other favorite villains Ooh, oh i i have a list sorry baka go ahead oh <laughs> Oh Lord! I, heard you <laughs> laughter, so I'm I, I will, I will not be bowing down to this one to anyone. But but Giraham from Zelda Skyward Sword is fucking amazing. He's I like, agree. He is he is a gay icon. Look at him. He has the fashion sense. He has the monologues, and a massive <sighs> tongue. Not not a, a reason for my pick, mind you, but I thought that was hilarious. I like, oh god, there's let me let me find it on YouTube because there's this <laughs> there's this whole scene when you first meet him where like he's trying to like essentially intimidate Link, and then he comes up behind him and then he just like like there's like a tongue oh. whip. It's yep. fucking hilarious. Yep, I remember this part. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like the first time you see him, it's like your first dungeon, you're going into this as if it's like a boss fight. Doesn't he like change his appearance at like some point down the road? I forget like his yeah, clothing twice. like changes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, you gotta have a good costume change. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Look at him. He's straight out of Square yeah, Enix. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, he's like that one character in, um, oh my god, which, which Final Fantasy is it? Was it uh, six? I mean, he, oh, I don't think I've played six yet. Um, yeah, I have an idea there, actually. He reminds me of, who is it, Kucha from Nine? Yeah, there you go, I can see that. I gotta find out the name of this character. I, I can see Kuja. Yeah. For sure. I love Kuja's design. <laughs> yeah, Kuja's cool. Kafka. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. He's so much, I love him. And I remember this fight being such a pain because of the way you have to use the motion controls. It was the motion controls, yeah. I didn't mind it, um, but I, I just generally didn't mind the motion controls in Skyward Sword in general. Well, no, I liked the motion controls in Skyward Sword. I just here, remember he here, was a pain here. trying to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He was like, hello. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I remember seeing that and being like, hello? I love this man. Oh uh, man, yeah, I remember that because I was just like, wow, this isn't this isn't Ganondorf. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, I'm No, Skyward Sword canonically is the first game in the series, and Ganondorf is not here, but it's Demise who is the main villain. Yeah. And it's theorized that Ganondorf is like uh, a creation of the curse that Demise placed. Mm. on Hyrule. Oh, okay. That's cool, because I was going to say that's part of one of my favorite villains was Ganon, actually. Because, I mean, he's in every Zelda, but he's... I don't know, I think my best rendition, my favorite version of Ganon is probably, like, from, uh, I would have to say probably either Ocarina of Time or Twilight Princess, actually. Mm. I I think I like him in that one. Because Twilight Princess is my favorite, one of my favorite Zeldas. Anyway. I get that. I love the art style of that one. Oh yeah it was pretty mm -hmm. my my another favorite villain for me i is pyramid head silent hill too oh yeah, Ooh, yeah. He, he's I, he's more he he made i think pyramid head is what made silent hill too i mean silent hill in general iconic to begin with because let's say silent hill 2 is a great game in general like beyond that 
But like Silent Hill, I mean, like Pyramid Head, I remember playing was fucking scary. So <laughs> like scary. I just remember being scared of that dude because, like, you know, uh, you know, going back and playing like Resident Evil two and three, you have like Mister X and like Nemesis who follows you around. But I remember there were certain scenes. There was a scene. There was a place in Silent Hill two where like you don't have a map of this place. I just remember like Pyramid Head just walking around the place like chasing you. Like it was just JK. Was, I <laughs> won't actually be playing this game. <laughs> That's terrifying. Pyramid Head's, Pyramid Head's intro of just being oh, in the yeah. apartment yes. building, just standing there on the other oh. side of the gate, like not moving, not doing anything, not saying like, well, I mean, he never speaks, but like, but he's just there. Yep. Yeah, I remember that part. So I, that was a that was very good. I remember that part when I because my radio was going off and I'm just like, what is this? And I turn around because you don't see it in the camera until you turn and go directly to it. But like he's just standing there looking at you, and it's just like, oh, uh-huh. like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pyramid Head Two is one of my one of my best villains ever. I have like a little baby list. Well, two two of them we already talked about of Glados and Voss. Oh um, yeah. I have <laughs> an individual, an organization, and a type of villain. Okay. Um. <laughs> So the type of villain that's like my favorite is um, those ghost girls getting revenge. Like, honestly, I cheer them on. I'm talking like and Alessa Gillespie, Alma from Fear, every oh. shrine maiden in Fatal Frame. Like, <laughs> yeah. honestly, I approve because Alessa. you were all abused. And so, right. like, oh, Alessa them. was the little girl in Sun to mm-hmm. One. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought you meant like <laughs> like the the woman. I was just like, wait a second. <laughs> like, oh no 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 no. Yeah, the little girl in that. So like, who is like, who is Alma? Uh, I, I was going to say I fear. love you for bringing up Alma. Thank you. For Alma, that. Alma's yes. what's her? Uh, Alma is the antagonist in Fear. She's like yeah. the oh. girl. Uh, first first encounter assault recon. Yep. Um, yeah. So, so, but she's another you know like little girl who was experimented on because she like had psychic abilities um so then of course she like becomes the antagonist and is like killing a lot of people and yeah. i'm just like honestly i cheer all of them on <laughs> yeah yeah, it, yeah i do too but she, they are scary like the games are so uh they're so good which i recommend you play too by the way don't play part three but still yeah i never <laughs> i never beat i have the first one or had the first one uh but i never beat it um Organization, the Healing Church from Bloodborne. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's the whole kind of like, uh, are you do you, are you in with the Healing Church or are you on the other side of this? Are you like with the school? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and so much of it, it's you know, it's just like being presented with the blood. And I think it was Lawrence who was like head of the healing church. who was just like, great, this is a great opportunity. And other people were just like, oh, not sure about this or the side effects. And they were like, don't care. Let us use this. Like, let's become high beams. To our side. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, it was so, I don't know. It's just like such a great, uh, exhibit of like, yeah. E- evil doing like it, mass is like good intent, but like, ignoring all of the warning sides for essentially just like of you like kind of greed um yeah so i think that they're a great evil organization oh my god it was yeah. like um uh when you're you're just before like rom's boss fight and it's like you're on that balcony and it's just oh i've forgotten his name but it was like the old head just like he's like essentially dead at this point, but he just he's yeah, just in pointing. The yeah, he's just pointing towards that location. He's just like, oh my mm. god, that's so <laughs> good. It's so good. Um, oh, and yeah. for individual who, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna give it to Bad Girl from No More Heroes. I don't know why <laughs> I love her, but I freaking uh. love her. She's just fun. I mean, she's disgusting and vile, but like, she is great. <laughs> I don't. Bach, are you familiar with Bad Girl? Uh, That's no. Uh, I, can I? Should I play just like the intro can... to her boss fight? Sure. Because that that tells you everything you need to know about the character and her style. Also, uh, no more heroes made you look like you were doing something fun when you were charging your sword. I don't 
know oh. what you mean. Oh, also, she is an amazing pleather for breakfast is her boss fight theme. Amazing A pleather. Song. Pleather oh. for breakfast. Amazing. It's, it's such a good song. It's such a good battle theme. Phew. What a day. I need a drink. <laughs> so fucking thirsty. Uh-huh. Hold on a sec. This is a Nintendo Wii game. Yeah, is it? it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also this is <sighs> the game is you're trying to Damn be the number one food. assassin. So oh, she's I see. another assassin. I feel alive again. Yeah. Hello, you gimp in the background. Want a drink? Yeah. <laughs> I'll pass. Pop quiz. Why am I such an angry bitch? Seriously, no matter how many I kill, it's all the same. They're all going to pay. Yeah, with their fucking lives. Oh my god, it's still like wide girl. eyes. You have no right to look at me like that. It's just a job. The daily grind. <laughs> the daily grind? Yeah. Not in the office. You're no assassin. You're just a perverted killing maniac. In essence, they're the same. Don't go on thinking you're better than me. You think you're hot shit. Who the fuck do you think you are? Come on! Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, this her game. fight She's kinda is kinda cool! Awesome! She's Wait, so yeah. cool! It's a mirror! Well... The funny thing about that game too, man, is like I was saying, you have to actually shake your weapon to like charge the sword. Yeah, that's cool. But it makes it look like you're actually uh, doing yep, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also want to show. Oh, well, first of all, so the dude on the treadmill comes into play. Oh, yeah. he does? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know when she does it. Uh, I think she does it in a second. Oh <laughs> <laughs> and then like they run around the stage and can also fight you but then halfway through also this happens wait where is it oh <laughs> oh my god <laughs> The drama. Oh my god! I that love is, her. that. Is a wooden bat. <laughs> it's a wooden bat that's now on fire. Oh, also, when she falls like that, if you go anywhere near her, it's an instant kill. She will beat you to death. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like a little. It's um. Yeah. But yeah, I love Bad Girl so much. <laughs> Look at her yeah. saunter. Sorry, anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, that game is great. I do recommend it. It's fun. I, if you can I ever... did not uh, play all of it, but uh, I don't care. I love Bad Girl <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah, that is an awesome game. I haven't, God, I haven't played it. But man, Same. that's something they can bring over to the Switch. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, but like really quick though, another uh, some last ones really quick. I wanted to talk about something as well because, um, like disappointment or in believing the hype as we call it, like you know being disappointed for game releases. Yeah. Um... Like <laughs> it just kind of. I brought this up because, as you know, the Japanese game show just happened. So I haven't um, watched it, but you can yeah. tell me everything. So, okay, so I didn't get to see, like, I didn't see every game, of course, but the reason why people were hyped about it was because for a few months, everyone was seeing rumors of a leaked Silent Hill game or a Silent Hill 2 remake, or Silent Hill 2 remake, excuse me. So everybody was like, ooh, we, you know, and, and I was, I was happy too. I was just kind of like, oh, okay, this, maybe this is it. But I kind of got the picture when I saw news probably like two days before that the uh, Konami renewed their, um, their, license for the Sukiden series, which is actually a great game too. Um, I love the Sukiden series. They're great RPGs, but that's, you know, nobody wanted that, of course. So when in the Japanese game show, all of a sudden Konami reveals the Sukiden remasters 
of two of the Sukkoten games, which is cool and all. It's still good games, but people, I mean, I've, I've seen on Twitter and Silent Hill 2 has been trending for like about a couple of days and they are pissed. <laughs> and I mean, I get why I'm, I'm upset too, because well, even if, if you don't remake it or remaster a Silent Hill game, I would love another Silent Hill game, but you know, so yeah, people are, are mad and I've been disappointed like that a few times, even when games released, I've been disappointed. So, you know, one of my biggest disappointments for game announcements are Splinter Cell. I, I say this all the time. Every time Ubisoft has something, I'm thinking Splinter Cell, nothing. You know, Splinter, you know, Splinter Cell has skipped the entire, like, last gen, like, PS4 and Xbox One. Like, we haven't had a Splinter Cell since the PS3. So, you know, yeah, so that is that would be for me just that disappointing. I was hoping for Silent Hill, but, I, I, you know, I was really hoping from the way it looked, the images we were seeing, because the images that got uploaded online, Konami actually had a cease and desist. Like, they were like, take this shit offline now. Like, you know what I mean? So. But then again, there could be a still could be a Silent Hill in the in the works or just kind of um, like trolling us a little bit because everybody knows about it. So who knows? But I just wanted to bring that up because I had the question of what games did disappoint you or like what uh, releases disappointed you the most? I had kind of like a, a thought of like the reverse of like, I don't know, like the dangers of hype where a game was like pumped up so much that when it came out it like didn't meet these expectations yeah um i i think of, i i have not personally played it but like cyberpunk yep yeah i, I have it. That was, that I, was I, I have one. cyberpunk yeah i have cyberpunk and whoo now granted i actually do like it but yeah it, it's very yeah. <laughs> I think about also, I, um, one of the games that, like, was pumped up so much, because uh, we were talking about Bioshock earlier, um, that then, like, got released to a flood of hate, and I have not played through it all yet. I'm only... I don't even know... I think I know what in. you're gonna say. We Happy Few? Oh, I loved uh, We Happy Few. <laughs> I have not found any about it that i hate yet yeah I, i've been really liking it so like i don't I'm remember why people didn't point. like it yeah well i mean so many people they were saying like oh my god this is gonna be the next bioshock oh because like it's a brilliant story idea uh -huh. um it was so. it was very very good in my yeah. opinion I, I, yeah. I, I the agree. fact that you I, have like three different plot lines as well because like yeah. you play as i think his name is arthur um yes as the first character <laughs> and then you've got like it. Another Sally. character you can play after that, Sally, and then another one, which I've fully forgotten. I think it might be like Ollie or something. Name. I don't, I yeah. don't remember. But it was they're very good because they're like, yeah. like interweaving with each other. But yeah. it's like, it's it's just lovely, and like I, the I, guy that I can't remember his name of, his one was so sad. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't played those yet. I've I've heard the hate about the Happy Few as well. Yeah, and I, I don't get, like, I feel like so many people, because they were comparing it to Bioshock, had, like, a certain image in mind. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I don't feel like that's necessarily fair to the game developers, because maybe they didn't have that image. And, like, right. just because it's not what you imagined this thing that you have not experienced, of, like, right. what it would be, it's not fair, then, to, da uh, like, bash on a game that so far i really don't have any yeah. complaints it seems like a yeah, it's good. good game <laughs> like... yeah it, that's what i mean that's why i always say this stuff is subjective sorta i mean there's some stuff that do that is released that it's terrible releases they like you said cyberpunk <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean but yeah yeah <laughs> but it's like yeah it, you know if you like it i think yeah if you like it you like it but i've seen people get crapped on because they like certain games that everybody doesn't like whatever like you know though like i said i genuinely i actually do like cyberpunk it's actually got some great story and some gameplay but it is buggy it was buggier than hell when it came out it was terrible yeah and, and i think, you know, that, I think that, yeah i don't think like cyberpunk from what i've seen of it it doesn't strike me as a bad game it just strikes me as it came out way too soon i think Very. because everyone was just like this looks so good we want it now and it's like okay here it is but it's not really finished here are yeah. a lot of bugs yeah and, and so I, just like the backlash so it's just like <sighs> yeah and another real quick another game that does get a lot of hate which i personally like i don't care 
um, you can fight me, is I like Resident Evil 6. I don't care. I, yeah, it's that not one the does best. get a lot of hate. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it's not the best in the series. No, by far not the best at all. But I really do like it. I enjoyed it. The damn look, the game has four freaking campaigns in it, dude. And, it. and it, it had online multiplayer. It had like a whole bunch of multiplayer modes. Um, you can even become the monster and hunt down the other players in their games. Like to me, it was just I I liked it. It wasn't the like I said. It's not the best Resident Evil game by far in the series. Probably maybe the one of the well no not one of the worst but it's still I like it I I dug it it was fun so you you know you can fight me so <laughs> that's just me I, I have a reverse of a game from a franchise that's so beloved that has been mentioned uh -oh. and I've been toying this whole time of do I do I admit that I hate uh -huh. this game and despise this whole oh. franchise do it I'm so scared. <laughs> Okay, I hate Kingdom Hearts so okay. much. Okay. I no, but but understand, I loved Kingdom Hearts one. I bought my PS2 for Kingdom Hearts, and I played that game. That was a game where I, when I beat it the first time, at for like a split second, I felt so like happy and elated, and then I felt empty because of how much I had loved that game. I immediately played that game. Like I played through that game four times, which for me, I don't really play through games multiple times because I have such an insane backlog. Um, so like me playing through it four times is a lot. Change of memories happened. I I never be, I got to like the final boss, but it was a battle system I didn't like. And also it just, it you know, it was so different that I kind of excluded it. Kingdom Hearts 2. I was so excited to play this game. I, Cause I was just like, oh my God, my favorite game, my favorite game is getting a sequel. And I played this game and I tried to tell myself that I loved it for a while. And then after I played through it and like sat with it, um, I, it just really just felt like I'm walking between cutscene to cutscene and every fight is just pressing this one button. So like I and, and the story, I also have a huge issue with like retconning storylines, which that game did a lot of. I mean, Change of Memories also did. Um, that it just, it killed all of the love I had for that franchise to the point that I freaking despise Kingdom Hearts. Like, I will, if, if friends of mine are streaming it, I might leave a, a muted tab open, but, like, I will not watch it. I will, like, I hate that entire franchise so passionately because I'm disgusted with what they did with KH2. <laughs> like... I'm sorry. I know so many of your friends love that franchise. I I just I think it's trash. I think it's garbage, and it's dead to me. <laughs> you have a right to feel that way, though. That's a you know that's like a point we bring up all the time. Like people who hate on people because they don't like a certain game or like a certain game. Like I mean, hey, I've never look. I'll tell you, put it like this: I've never played through all the Kingdom Hearts, so I can't really say anything about how good it is or not. I've heard a lot of love for it. And, and I've heard like some it, stuff like about it. Like, it. Yeah, I like I like I don't want to take away from like other people's joy from it. Like if you love it, if you get what you want from it, like oh, that yeah. is great. Um, I just <laughs> don't. I, <laughs> hey, I feel it like one hundred percent. I you know that's and well that's your right to not like it. I well, you know like I said I might not like it. I love RPGs, so I'm 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 going to eventually go through them and try them out myself. But there are some games that are popular in the series that I don't really care to like either. So, like you know those things, it happens though. But no, we don't. You know, we don't care if you don't like a series. That's just you. But that was so heartbroken. Kingdom Hearts, I'm surprised because like I hear a lot of love for it. <laughs> that is a surprising. I, I I was it was my favorite. I I. Yeah, after playing two, I literally sold anything cage related that I oh, had. Oh shit! Like that's how much it just. Oh man! I sold all my games. I sold like oh, immediately. Shit. That's wow. how much it just. Yeah. Killed every um, love, every bit of love I had for it. I hate that game topic. so much. <laughs> on the topic of Disney, <laughs> and like I know I, I'm on the fence about it, but the. Disney Dreamlight Valley, um, I, I'm leaning towards not liking it, as far as I mean, because I've I've opened it up I think twice now and I've played for like a few hours, and like, 
I I've been talking to a friend about it as well, who's also been like playing it on and off. And he was just like, and the start of it is very much cleaning sim. And I'm like, and yeah, I can agree with that. It feels like I'm just cleaning up stuff, like, for a while. And then I'm, like, going and doing, like, like menial tasks for, like, Disney characters. <laughs> like, and, like, I don't quite know what is going on in the game. But, like, I feel like the thing that... Uh, annoyed me the most like coming into it um was like in I, I know this is like not necessarily a thing on like the the games like graphics or, or whatever or such but like the character creation on it like yeah you can go in like afterwards and kind of go and um edit your character but i think there were like like 12 different options and, like, they were all, like, it felt super feminine or, like, super masculine. And there was, like, one character that had vitiligo. And I was, like, so that's that's your only inclusion here. <laughs> um, and it just, it felt a bit weird. And then, like, they have different body sizes. And, like, it's either, like, you're skinny, you're buff skinny, or you're, you're slightly bigger. But, like, only one. Like, there's not, like, a slider or anything. Or, like, you can't, like like make this your own in any way it's either you're skinny or you're muscle skinny and that it annoyed me because i was like disney you have the money to to make this game like as as grandiose as you would want it to be you have the resources to employ whoever you want because nobody's gonna turn down working for disney like unless you are incredibly busy or like you just have this personal hatred for disney like, nobody's gonna turn down working for Disney, because I assume that they pay well, and also that is massive promotion. Like, they have the resources to make this game, like, amazing, and I just kind of feel like, so far from what I've played of it, they've missed the mark for me. Uh, apparently, like, from what I've played so far, I haven't experienced, like, any, like, glitch that's made me have to, like, exit the game. But, like, I've had a couple of friends say to me that, like, they've experienced glitches where they've had to, like, like exit their game and, like, come back in. Or, like, they've lost progress. And I'm just like, ooh, don't like that. Ah, yeah. You know, we're, that is the worst. And really quick, the last one I'll real bring up for me and disappointment all in general. And I'm going to say this because it broke my heart because I'm a big fan of this franchise. 100% it came out uh, last year. Um, is... Battlefield 2042. Like, what the shit did DICE... I mean, it's EA, so I guess we shouldn't be surprised, right? But, like, listen, when it, no matter how bad EA was, Battlefield has always been pretty decent. Even when they released Battlefield 4, 3 and 4, especially 4, 4 is my favorite Battlefield. Ba Battlefield 4 was released. It was great. The story was great, but the online play was really bad. It was, you know, choppy rubber banding and all that stuff, but they fixed it really quick. And it was ended up being one of the greatest battlefield games of all time. Now, 2042 releases, your character can't look up. Your character can't look down. Sometimes you can't move or you try to resurrect your teammates. You fall through the map. You can't shoot. You can't see through your guns. Every the texture pop-ins are horrible. The map was the maps are huge. Okay, the maps are huge now because each battlefield game you had sixty four players. It was uh, you know it it was like thirty two versus thirty two or even smaller, right? Now it's one hundred and twenty eight players, so that makes everything just work like crap. The AI sucks because you can have AI bots in it if you if the nobody fills it up. It's it's so buggy. I can hardly play this game, and I've got a machine that's well equipped to play it, but. They, there's no PC optimization whatsoever so far. I mean, it's been a whole entire year. They're already on season two of Battlefield, and it's horrible. And I have not been able to play this game, and I'm so pissed that I bought this game because I love Battlefield, and that's one game that I've always been hyped for. But Battlefield has really, like, 2042 has just really ruined it for me. I have not played 2042 since um, the first two months after it released because I am unable to play it. It's horrible. That's, but that's just me, my little rant, because I tried to like look at it today or like a couple of days ago to see if there's anything. And I still see people are having problems with this game. 
it's it's horrible it's been almost it's it was released last year it was released like last november or something like that yeah it's still having problems they're continuing to update stuff and add stuff new maps and update the maps and all that but we have no optimization like the gameplay is like crap so that's just me i just i, I just it just irks me <laughs> no that's fair I, I i always get mad when games are obviously released before they should be yeah yes like yeah. i get you yeah, like the money people and the business people in the game industry they're just like oh but like profits and like the t- timing yeah. and market and whatnot and it's just like yeah but it's not ready mm-hmm. yeah. like you can release it now but all you're gonna do is give us bad press and people complaining about yeah. the game and asking for refunds yeah. why not give us more time so that we can finish it it's like that that did happen it. with uh cyberpunk because yeah. like yeah. to be fair they like they were working on it for a while and they were pressured to release this sooner because they yeah. were missing deadlines upon deadlines, essentially. But, like, as a game dev, at, at, at some point, you kind of have to stand your ground and be like, well, do you want a game that's going to be unfinished and buggy? Or do you want a game that's going to be worth your money? Right. Yeah. And I think they kind of just gave in to the pressure a bit. Pretty much. Because this is CD Projekt Red we're talking about. So, you know, their games are outstanding. So... Mm. Oh yeah. Some, wasn't you know, was, wasn't yeah. there a uh, an Assassin's Creed game that was just buggy as fuck? I think yeah. it might have been Black there were two. Flag. It was Black Unity. Flag and Unity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like Black Flag's the one that I do have, and I didn't play much of it. But I, I remember seeing a glitch way back where like the ship and some like whatever was in the river yep. would just float up into the air yep, i remember seeing that on youtube and i was just like that's that's great but like oh, yeah like realistically that's not great at all jesus christ yeah but isn't it isn't it that. ubisoft yep and they're another one that drives me nuts too yeah ubisoft <laughs> one of it downhill oh well, that was, much, uh, yeah. i was reading um one of recent trier's books um former head writer at kotaku and mm. he uh, has two books about like game development and I don't remember which one it was but in one of them he was talking about um, he was like interviewing different game developers who were talking about like the the business side of people uh, of the industry and how they they don't play games they don't understand it so they don't care and they're the ones who it's just like if you if you want money to you know pay your bills um, you release it when we say. Period. So then, like the game devs are just like they know they know when it goes out that it's it's not ready, but like they don't get to control of that. So it's either it goes out unfinished or they lose their house. So it's like I feel really bad for them. Yeah, that that's situation. that does suck, and I that's I think it's also what happened with the, like the people that you know like CD Projekt Red with Cyberpunk. Yeah, it's it does suck. That that does happen and it's just yeah but that's how it goes and like i said that you know 2042 just really hurt my feelings i'm just ugh. no it's fair hey. <laughs> you know I, accept, I accept like some bugs because it especially if it's a game that involves like online stuff you know because they haven't even with testing it wouldn't have been tested on the same scale mm-hmm. yeah it's like once the thing is out so it's like i expect some bugginess for yeah, like, for sure. a, a little while, like that's fine. But like that, that sounds horrible. It, like, it that's is not horrible. Even a game. That's not. You can't even play <laughs> a thing. No. <laughs> yeah, it's bad, man. Yeah, it was. Oh bad. my god. Speaking of like like games that you couldn't play. Remember, I think it was when like New Order came out, and they were like like use upon like the thousands to even fucking get into a server or something. And like, oh, didn't god. that happen also with like? Like Endwalker, Final Fantasy fourteen, Endwalker. Um, Endwalker, yeah. Okay, so yeah, what happened with Endwalkers? Um, I haven't got a chance to play it, but it gets every time this happens on Final Fantasy in general. But Endwalkers, they were running out of copies, even digital yeah. copies, because people were buying the shit out of it, and then you know people were overfilling the servers. Yeah, and that's like yeah. they shut down the the free to play option for a while, because like yep. for yeah. for those of you that don't know, like Final Fantasy fourteen online. You can play for free up until you're level 60. 
And yeah. then that's when, like, the subscription fee will come into it. But, um, no, like, when Endwalker came out, they shut that down because they were just, like, we're overpopulated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it is crazy because that's how good it was, though. It was also because oh, it was just yeah, good. Oh, yeah, I've heard great um, things from it. And the soundtrack's great. Oh, yeah. And, when, and I didn't get a chance to bring it up in the last episode, but Shadowbringers has an amazing soundtrack. Shadowbringers has amazing, an amazing soundtrack. Yeah, an amazing like, soundtrack. And the game is amazing. I think they, they really did knock it out of the park with Final Fantasy XIV soundtracks. And like really I'm sure did. I'm sure at one point we listened to Lahi. Yeah. Which was funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh such greatness. Yeah, Shadowbringers is good. But yeah, that's yeah, I just wish that yeah, that people would care, they would release games out with love like they used to back in the day. Don't get me wrong, there were still bugs in old ass games back then. But I, you know, I don't ever recall playing games back then to where they were that broken. You know, like well, the way also, they... I mean, that was back in the day when when you bought a game, you just put it in. You didn't have to wait five <laughs> hours for it to download. Yeah. Even if you have a physical copy of the game, it still needs to spend hours downloading additional stuff. Like exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just put it in and play the goddamn game. Like what's right? the Like yeah. I think I, that's- I, I think that's part of, like, why so much uh, is turning to, like, indie devs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because indie devs, like, do take the time. And they don't have the same budget, but that also means that they don't have the same pressures. Yeah, Yeah. the pressure. Yeah, because they put a lot of love and finish their stuff a lot. And that's, that's, (laughs) like I said, that's the real reason. That's one of the reasons why I loved, even though the controls are horrible, I love Visage the way I did. Because I could tell it had a lot of love into it, but. The yeah. controls were just the controls were just ass. <laughs> Talk about frustrating game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the controls. Yeah, but it's true. Yeah, the, the the pressure is not there, and that's why I have this whole big ass list of all these indie horror games that I just need to play. Like, but because horror games are booming, so I just you know, like I said, they're just all these indie games. They're they're just they're knocking it out the park as far as I'm concerned compared to these bigger companies. So. I don't hardly look forward to big AAA like titles as much anymore. I don't think there's really one that I can think of that's like that big in AAA that I'm really looking forward to lately at all. Not that I know, not that I can ring off the top of my head that quickly compared to any any games. Yeah, I can't think of like what the big AAA games are right now. Right, it's like good. there's yeah, there's some that are cool that I mean I've seen and it's like oh I've got to play that. But like I, I can't think of any necessarily right now. I mean, it also could be because you know my brain is old. But I'm sorry, what was the uh, question? We've been talking about indie a lot. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, what, we do. What was the question? <laughs> well, I was just I was saying, just like, like, what are like? Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, I was just saying, like, the, you know, what are the AAA games that are coming out that we are excited more oh, to come um, out than indie games? <laughs> not more than indie games, mind you. But there's a few that I'm interested in, like the Callisto Protocol. I'm there you go. quite interested in that. Um, I which I, I think you would put that as a AAA. I don't know. I well, think it's I by think the, the same that... folks as. Um, the oh, Death, Death Stranding. Was it? Or maybe that's. I'm oh, pretty wait, sure some there? people from the uh, studio that. Uh, I think it's some of the people that worked on Dead Space is working which, on Which, by the Death way. Space, yeah. yeah. Death Stranding was a game that was also quite disappointing when it first came out. Yeah. Um, the the uh, director's cut is apparently a lot better though. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I, heard, I have too. But yeah, I'll that was that it. was when I also I was like pretty hyped for as just just as like a revenge story. Uh, yeah. But then it came out and I was like, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> indie games though, I like that's that's kind of my thing. Like it's. Like I, I keep on top of indie games. Talk to a lot of dead, like that sort of thing. We've, we, we, <laughs> I said this in episodes before. Um, so my Steam wish list is massive, of like indie games that are in development that are just like, oh, wish list our game because, um, you might not realize this, but wish listing games on Steam really helps the game, like really, oh. really helps the game. Like, and it's not, it's not doing anything to you. Like, you don't have to pay for anything. Just gonna sit in your wish list until like you get a notification that it's released. Like, yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. nothing for you, but it's massive for these indie devs. Like, sometimes these are this dev's first game that they're putting on Steam, and yep. you wish listing it just helps them. Yeah, for sure. 
this is also, my PSA I, to all of you to go yeah. wishlist uh, wish games, wishlist uh, Hollow Knight Silk Tongue. This has been, this has <laughs> been endorsed by Baka. It has, and we will continue. We were, trying, uh, we were trying blanks on like AAA games, and we were just talking about things like Zelda and Pikmin. I <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> we talk, no, talk like, technically wait. AAA games. <laughs> we just, we don't think about God them because they're like, yeah. <laughs> Like it's yeah. it's weird because we don't think about like Nintendo and think like AAA. We think like well, like yeah. Sony and such, and we think AAA just like those games yeah. that you see at like um, like Summer Games Fest or like the Game Awards or like E three and such. Yeah, because because when you think about AAA games, most of the time it comes out of, mostly now it's all multiplayer games because like you know yeah. you, have, you have this you know like Call of Duty which has been coming out which is coming out soon another mm. one and you know like. Well, like I, 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 I think they Creed they need to play. fucking give it a rest on, on, on Call of Duty. Like yeah. I know this this might be like a very like pointed topic, and I'm so sorry, viewers, if you like <laughs> Call of Duty, but Jesus Christ, like yeah, come on, it's the same game. Over well, yeah, and over pretty again. much. And I and and I happen to like some of the Call of Duties, not all of like, them. I haven't liked some the of, some ones. of the Black Ops games were good, and like the yeah. like Modern Warfare, like the first Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, see, that's the thing that I'm interested in because but Modern Warfare like, Two is being was, released in the few days. The like Black Ops. Black Ops Two came out when I was 15, and like they've been consistently still releasing Call of Duty games since then, and I'm 25 now. This has been like 10 yeah. years since that. So like. I think let move on. Let's move on to to other games, to other not toxic games. <laughs> oh, that's true. Well, I feel Man. that way about like um. I I mean I know it's I am very much not their audience, but like all the sports games. Yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, not yeah. Like, every sport either. game every year. It's just like it's like. But it's the same. Yeah, <laughs> I like I don't FIFA. Do FIFA is either. dead now because I think like I I think it went under not very long ago. Um, but it's like that and like the Madden games and like the, that sort of stuff. I'm just like, it's the same shit every <laughs> year. And then like, it's so funny because like I do go and browse like, um, like game stores or like secondhand game stores and such like that because I just like it, you know? Um, oh, same. and <laughs> it's so funny seeing like, like the last fucking like, like sports games from like the previous year like go down to like five pounds or like below that when like that that year where they came out they were like 50 60 pounds yeah it's so fucking funny seeing that because i'm just like is this is it really that fleeting is it like these games are like no longer relevant you should not be releasing game after game if your previous games are going to become that obsolete Oh my yeah, gosh. it's and weird. Like, so I, much I, of like the used <laughs> bin section is, is those, those games. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> like I remember. I think Epic gave me like one of them for free, like <laughs> the year it came out. Like by the time it was like close to the end of the year, Epic was just like, "Here you go." I, yeah. you know, and I, I mean, I took it because it was free, but I really don't have any. Plans it's like it, it really play. says a lot about like those types of games that it's like, oh, we release a new game. Fuck our old game. Like, fuck all the effort yeah. that we put into the old game. Anybody who worked on it, like, like all of that. Fuck that. Yeah. Look at this new game, this new shiny game that we're going to charge like 50 pounds for. But it's going to be like, like dirt cheap in like six months, yep. maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't get this keep, shit either. They keep pumping them out. So it's like, I feel like you have to be getting money. Like, oh, yeah. To be successful. But like, I just don't. I don't get, get yeah, it. I, don't I mean, like, if that's your thing, great. I'm glad that you found your thing. Mm -hmm. I don't comprehend it. Yeah, I, I don't either. I don't really care I for just it much. I don't, <laughs> like, I just don't really support it because it just, it feels very cash grabby to me. Yeah. I, I think so too because what sports games do, especially like, the, well, I, all of them that I know of, but I had a few football games at one point. And when it comes to like updating the roster and like all that stuff in, in, in real life NFL and all that stuff, like the games do it too. Like the, when there's like in when a player gets drafted to another team or something, or like something happens like that. I've known games to update that. So I don't know why That's they keep cool. pumping it out. They could just come out with one and just keep updating that shit. I don't know. It's just weird. 
But yeah, I don't know. It's like like I said, like you said, I don't comprehend it either. I don't really care for the sports games. I know lots of the people that I've known playing games with. They are more sport game fans than anything else. The only sport game I think that I've actually really ever cared to buy are the UFC games. But I just really enjoy, I used to enjoy UFC, but I don't really get into it much anymore. But uh, they, they don't pump those, those out like they used to. That that was my one sports game that I really got into for a while. Oh, tennis? Mario Tennis. Mario, oh, Mario Tennis, tennis. Okay. yes. <laughs> there was actually a tennis game on the PS1 that I actually did enjoy. That was like it. That was it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Because oh. we were talking about uh, N64 games earlier. Um, 1080 snowboarding. I also yeah. <laughs> And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Like, let's be real. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 was a great oh, time. Yeah, yeah. But the difference <laughs> with these games is that, like, these are, like, one game that was like released uh, like they're not getting pumped out every year like yeah maybe well, there mean, was like a, a couple well Tony Hawk. maybe there was like a couple yeah. games that came after that and also we did just get a remake and i think there was a remake that flopped um i think so but uh, like 1080 snowboarding but, but 1080 snowboarding yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> that yeah it's weird i that's like that's the same thing well i want to say it's the same thing as fighting games but i kind of feel fighting games do it a bit differently what do you uh, mean by fighting games? Well, you know, like Mortal Kombat and Street oh, Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, because like they like, you know, they don't get released every year. So like, mm -hmm. but I, I feel fighting games take a little bit more time and get a little bit better. Sometimes there are some that suck. But, you know, like my favorite fighting game of all time is Killer Instinct. And I say this mm -hmm. all the time. You know, we only got three Killer Instincts. But it was there was a reason for that because the company Rare kind of, you know, yeah. but um you know like mortal Kombat, for instance there is what 10 mortal Kombat, no 11 mortal Kombat. yeah 11. so yeah there's 11 and you know those have been coming out but i feel like mortal Kombat has consistently like like innovated like every new game they come out kind of gets better and i, I enjoy say. them i haven't played all of them though don't get me wrong i don't have 11. um but like mortal Kombat is good Tekken, I, I kind of, I, I used to enjoy the shit out of Tekken, no. Um, but those are only ones. Like, I kind of feel fighting games kind of do it a little bit differently than what sports games do. I feel like fighting games also, I've only played a little bit of uh, Street Fighter V because Jury. Also, uh, first, I think, uh, evil female, like, villain in Street Fighter. Oh. Um, but I feel like they also have a lot like there's like a story yeah. mode so like i i do view it less as sports thing because it, it does have a story to Very it true. as well of like why characters are maybe like doing this and interacting and yeah um why there's maybe a giant bear that's <laughs> <laughs> right that bear is awesome by the way oh bear. i bet I would play no one else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that might be us for today. Yeah, we covered so a lot we, of topics. <laughs> we really did. Here we thought we had just a little bit of topics. Yeah, I think like I came into this just like, are we going to talk about like three topics, or are we going to talk like what half an hour about these topics each? No, we've uh, nope. At time of recording, we're like two and a half hours in. You guys might not get like a two and a half hour episode, but like we, we've been here, we've been sitting talking for this long. We were talking prior to this because, of course, sure we watched the, the Nintendo Direct and we're just kind of, we hang out generally for a bit before recording. Oh, yeah, of course. Hey, we're shooting the breeze, man. It's, with, it's, it's fun. <laughs> Welcome to oh, a Hot that... Topics episode. <laughs> right, right. Heck yeah. Hell yeah, that was great. Well, I mean, yeah, that's us. You know, I appreciate all of you guys for kicking it here with us as usual. Um, everything we talked about, games, all that stuff, just make sure you check the description down below. And without further ado, I've been Rain. I've been Baka. And I'm Gray. And we'll see you guys we will next see week. You next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.